you know, we just end we just end up in the mud. <laughs> so um, I've I've kind of softening my my stance on that. I think I think. Oh, okay, good. Oh, and by the way, the uh, gentleman, um, Mr. Hal, has arrived, and and it's a pleasure to see you, Mr. Hal. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm doing fine. How are you guys doing? Pretty, pretty good. good. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, this is Jim, by the way. He's the, he's the um, MGTOW who's a sex slave to this Asian woman, and uh, he lives in her basement, and uh, he's been fortunate enough to join us now. <laughs> well, Have you been Well, there? I really could, I couldn't go my own way if I was a sex slave, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, clearly not. You can't. <laughs> I'd have to be masturbating angrily on a Sunday night to be a MGTOW. <laughs> How Have you been, man? Uh, I've been doing good. How about yourself? Well, trying to master the tech of this uh, OBS shit and, and failing miserably at it. and uh, yeah, yeah, I see I see you walking around like you're on Adderall, just uh, <laughs> back and forth like an uh, old man at a fucking uh, nursing home. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, totally. No, but uh, w- what about you? What's happened with the fun streams? Uh, I, well, you know, I, I've kind of taken the week off. I got, uh, I got punished on Twitter for making a joke about suicide that they didn't like. So I was like, whatever. Okay, I went, I went. I went and played video games. I don't, I don't fucking care. No, but uh, well, no, you do care. I mean, if you didn't care, you wouldn't be on Twitter, now would you? No, no. You're asking about the streams. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the streams. What happened with the the streams? Yeah, just, just yeah. No, I'll, I'll eventually hop over to uh, Streamy. I mean, that's where I said I'm gonna uh, go do stuff. Yeah, because uh, you figure that your days are numbered on YouTube or what? Well, no. I mean, I just figured. It, you know, what does it matter? I mean, I, I read off like an hour and a half's worth of uh, aborted baby jokes for Super <laughs> Chat. So I think I'm fine on YouTube, but, um, I, you know, I stream these kind of grown on me. I, I've been watching more and more of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's it's mostly, you know, really, really small channels, but I, I, I kind of like it. I mean, they, they were better than DLive. I mean, they seem to be willing to to put shit up and let people kind of do what they want. And I can watch Murdoch Murdoch there. So that already makes it a better platform in my eyes. Yeah, I love Murdoch Murdoch, and I can't, I, I can't believe that, well, I can believe that they, they, they'd never be allowed anywhere else except Stream Me, and where else are they allowed on? A- apart from their own video, uh, their, their own website, rather. Yeah, I mean, they've got their own, their own site to host it and stuff, but I mean, if people don't mirror it on YouTube, it's kind of either BitChute, if they can get it up there, or, you know, streaming service like Stream Me, is what I've seen. Yeah. So anyway, I gotta ask. Uh, so is the the war with Sargon? Is it still on, or are we on a hiatus, or 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 a ceasefire? Or what is this? Is this uh, North Korea, or is this like? A, a, is there a DMZ? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's a DMZ full of uh, deviant fucking Romanians just lined up in between us. <laughs> okay, what the hell happened As everybody there? Everybody looks at their F list list of fetishes. That's oh, what's uh, separating no. us. Oh, yeah. I, I missed out on the V lore. What happened there? Because I was away from it. <sighs> I am, the dude likes fucking orcas. What can I say? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you gotta ask him about that. Like fucking, like, what do you mean orcas? Oh. Like, uh, like I'm talking, women? let's go to SeaWorld and jump in the tank and I'm going to fuck a blowhole until somebody arrests me. Kind of banging orcas. Okay, yeah, wait, I'll have I, to send you the I, link. I don't, so I, don't, I don't know if you're being euphemistic or if this is actual. No, it's, how's, he's, how's, he's, uh, how's, how's your lady guest doing? Is she enjoying this conversation? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm listening with with um, awe and amusement <laughs> to to what is going on. I'm 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 yeah. I'm enjoying myself. It's all good. <laughs> I mean, you're in Australia. There's aren't there actual orcas in the area around? There? I'm not familiar with their territory. Uh, the orcas. We got some of them. They're more kind of towards Antarctica than Australia. Mm-hmm. We get a lot of sharks. Okay. A lot of really big, deadly sharks that eat people semi frequently. Um, so I guess that they're like orcas, but with sharper teeth, more aggressive, and they're closer to land. I'm yeah, not sure if he's into thing. the shark thing, although he likes vores, so maybe maybe that would be something. <laughs> sure. Maybe. No, no, it's a, it's a, there are, it's a, it's a dangerous place, Australia. Like in in terms of the kind of creatures we have here, like you could you could die quite easily um, if you're out in the desert from any kind of snakes because they all come out at night. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a hazardous hazardous place to live, very much so. Well, we're talking about V, who is the um, capo of uh, Sargon. He's like he's like this lieutenant. He's he's like this. Uh, Jim calls him a carrier pigeon, who just mm-hmm. sort of like takes messages because Sargon never like interacts directly with people. He rather has V go and interact for him in his stead, 
And, and the weird thing is that I think that we're all in agreement that V is actually smarter than Sargon and <laughs> is a lot more sensible, but I missed out on this whole blow. Well, whole see, I, I would have thing. agreed with you that maybe he was smarter uh, mm -hmm. until he until he basically outed himself for paying for access to a hentai fucking Discord that translates Shota. So I don't know. I don't know how clever he is. That was kind of a shooting yourself in the foot moment, if you yeah. ask me. I, I caught a little bit of that. I, I didn't quite understand it. What is this porn? I have to, I'm, I'm kind of like afraid to ask, okay? Because I sort of like caught a bit of it, but I had other shit going on. I, I don't know. I mean, I called him, you know, I called him uh, some funny things. He called me some funny things. And then, uh, he is somebody who tweeted out and said, "Hey, this guy's showing up in our Discord asking uh, for for retweets in your internet slap fight." And they're like, "We don't know any of what any of this shit is." And it's this uh, hentai Discord. You have to pay for access via Patreon, I think. Mm -hmm. And the Patreon's associated with a, a group that does like translations and uh, hentai games, uh, and uh, <laughs> some of their content is Shodacon. Uh, so what is Shodacon? It's like Lollicon, but little boys instead of little girls. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. Jesus. I, I don't know. And then the F-list thing drops, so it's been a painful week the for me. The F-list thing? I, What's that? Uh, I, well, that, I, I don't know what the site is, but it was a, a fucking account that looked like it could be his that had a list of uh, a lot of fetishes, orcas and... Just so, well, Ralph, you went over this. Why don't you tell? Yeah, well, uh, what? <laughs> I, I mean, I can pull it up here. Uh, some of the fetishes. Hold on, you have to click a special I button. Think, I, I think, I think, was. Daisy, you're like, you yeah, know, I don't know. I'm talking sure a lot we more shit. Of the lady, but uh, you know, uh, a, a lot of uh, you're, you're totally gripping our style. proclivities and cum baths and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, look, you, you, you know, I believe in free speech. So <laughs> these are not the things this free. you guys want. <laughs> if you want to you want to talk about that well you know I'll, I'll listen and maybe i'll learn something you never know <laughs> there you go Come good attitude like, good attitude okay what, so what what is it uh it, i sent it, you the link i mean look there's a whole lit polar bears uh swallowing semen uh, oh my god <laughs> Holy uh, shit, you know, I'm into brain. I'm into anal brain. sex receiving as well. <laughs> and I'm getting a warning if I really want to get into this shit. Oh my god. Yeah, there's the link there, Coach. Uh, we, we did about an hour of it uh, Friday. Oh my god. So how, how was, yeah, and I, I saw people kind of talking about it. Uh, so how was the F-List account found anyway? Uh, it was posted, uh, and then I, I'd seen it for a couple of days, and I didn't talk about it till Friday. I'm not sure how it was discovered originally, though. I just saw it posted, and but it was a thing where it wasn't logged into for like three months, right? I yeah, mean, that yeah, had yeah. been sitting up there for years and years and years. Yeah, the account itself is like almost it's like eight years old, I think, uh, and it hadn't been logged in for like two or three months. So. Digital dragon, that's the species listed. Uh, so is this like, do you think it's legitimately V's or do you think, it, is this kind of like his version I mean, of Monday Matt's Odin account? I'm not, <laughs> look, I, I, I couldn't say for sure. It, it does, a lot of it lines up with him. I'll put it that way. And he did seem to get very upset uh, on Twitter about it. Uh, and I remember he was on the kill stream a few months back. I think you were on that program too, where he was just like, well, I hope I hope they really don't discover my real fetishes, mate. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, I couldn't say for sure, but it definitely launched. I think the orcas thing made me laugh. Like that, <laughs> that's stuck in my fucking head. What is like actual actual wanting to have sex with an orca? Oh my god! I, I, I'm just so I'm such a boomer. I, I, <laughs> Can you picture a little Romanian man <laughs> fucking a whale? Like uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's obviously not banging an actual whale, but. <laughs> That's just actually on his favorites list too. There's three different <laughs> lists. There's there's favorites, yes, maybe, and no. And that's on his favorites, and it has a target. And I'm being informed that the target means that the person who made the account wrote the description on their own. Uh, and it says big buff water studs, yes, please, anytime. Though natural equipment on them is a bit freaky. That's how it was uh, described. Now, when he's saying water studs, are we talking like a bunty kink oh. thing where he wants to drink people's piss? Is that water uh, sports? Is that what we're oh, talking? God. What, what, this this the bunty <laughs> thing, I didn't hear about that. That's new to yeah, me. See, well, you see, you keep telling. I, I heard I'm watching a little bit of the stream. You're talking about the scene, as you put it. you you got to inform her of the scene involving an amazing amount of degenerates. Like, there's one dude named Bunty King. He's given multiple interviews talking about his love of eating piss, shit, and period blood. You got V that wants to fuck whales. You got uh, what? What's the other one? Who was doing the lollycon debates for like? Oh, Louis Laval. 
Yeah, it's just, yeah. it's it's a good look. It's a good oh, look. Oh, yeah, and Daisy, look. Daisy. All these people are allied with Sargon, okay? So, so uh-huh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I just find She's this. Just like, what did I walk into? Yeah, what did you no, walk into? No, no, no. I, I, what did I walk into? No, <laughs> it, 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 it's all right, you know. I, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning as, as I go. It's, it's, that's, that's the spirit. That's, a- that's the spirit. That, that's the spirit. Yes, yes. That, that's what you say when you walk into a room with this kind of discussion going on. But I, I, I kind of find it shocking because, look, I have to admit that uh, you know, porn is not like a big thing in my life uh, in general. You know, I figure that you only are into porn when you're not getting laid, quite frankly. And but this kind of stuff is just just beyond bizarre. I I, I can't even imagine. I, I find it hard to believe that anybody would would actually go to the trouble of imagining this weird shit. Okay, it's just it, it, I don't know. I I'm, guess I'm just naive. Sorry, I'm inarticulate. Please, somebody save me because I want to talk about anything else except the this stuff. But why don't we talk about, about the Worski Tonka fight? Oh yeah, the fight that's never going to happen. Sure, I want to talk about you, that. No, I mean no. It's both. It's signed. They both uh, signed the contracts. Uh, me and Worski have a place rented out in Knoxville. Uh, that's going to be the uh, the what fight fight HQ there. Uh, so uh, and and I won't reveal everything, but I'm under I'm under the understanding that uh, there is a backup plan in case uh, in case Tonka doesn't show up. So. Oh, it's gonna um, be you and Andy are gonna go toe to toe. No, cool. no, I'm not gonna go. I, I think that's against the terms of my probation. I'm not sure. I'll oh, have okay. to double check on that. But, uh, but yeah, that's it. Does look like it's going to happen. At, at least I hope it does because I already rented the place out. So really, how much did it set you guys back? If you don't mind me asking. Um, so it was like so. I, you know, I went on Airbnb. Uh, it was like it was like six hundred and twelve dollars uh, for four days. Nice mm-hmm. little condo there in uh, downtown Knoxville. Six hundred twelve bucks for four days. What are you guys sleeping in a fucking shack? <laughs> no, it's really nice uh, actually. Airbnb. I don't know if you've ever used it, Jim, but there's a lot of good. Deals I'm not gonna there. sleep in some motherfucker's apartment. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of times it's not a place. So it's it's not a. There's nobody else there. So a lot of times it's people who have extra properties. Either they're trying to sell or they just have them as rental properties and they'll put them up on Airbnb. You're gonna get some crazy meth head popping out of the closet on <laughs> no, like day two. Who's gonna they, fuck you? They have, <laughs> it's gonna be an uncomfortable story. They have very good <laughs> reviews. There are places that you can stay on there where you're actually in somebody's house while they're there, but I, I don't wanna do that. So it's just it's just like renting an apartment, basically. So it's, somebody, it's nice. somebody in chat said you rented Venti's apartment. If you did, bring, <laughs> no. a fucking, bring a fucking vacuum cleaner and something to clean the cat shit up with, because you're in for a treat. <laughs> no, it's it's nice. It's nice. I won't I won't tweet out pictures of the place because you could probably easily find it, you know, by reverse image search. But it's it's pretty nice. So. A- Rawhide asks in the super chat. So is Ralph streaming the Donga fight? You're going to be doing that. Um, so, uh, I'm, so what it's my understanding the they're actually going to have a pay-per-view thing. Okay. Now, I'm going to be at the fight, uh, you know, basically in Warshi's Corner. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. if if we're not doing some type of thing where we can stream it, uh, we'll be doing some type of live programming there from the fight where I'm like, I don't know if you've ever seen boxing on, uh, on HBO back in the day, but... Uh, the guy who comes in and gives his take in between rounds on on what's happening, I might do something like that, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens. We'll definitely be doing a lot of uh, okay, a lot let, of programming there. Okay, months. contracts were signed. Fine. Where are there penalty clauses in that contract that if you don't? Show- I don't. I can't. I don't know. I mean, you're not. You know, you can't reveal. It's got a non disclosure agreement, so I can't. Okay. I don't know. I mean, it's up to you know. Worski knows about the. I don't. You know, he hasn't told me anything about the contracts because that would be against the rules. So I don't, I don't know anything about the contract. Okay, uh, I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, from what All I right. understand, I think that uh, the uh, what you call it, Donga, actually genuinely has some sort of uh, issue that he was injured in such a way that if he does, does get injured again, he could wind up paralyzed. So it seems absurd that he would potentially expose himself to physical damage danger that could render him a quadriplegic that seems crazy but you know maybe his well i do know that he signed the contract and traditionally there is some type of you know in contracts usually there's some type of penalty i know that they're putting a lot of promotion into this um so i'm assuming that there probably is some type of uh penalty jim what do you think you think it's going to happen 
Uh, well, you know, I mean, here's what I would have loved to have seen, or at least see going forward from Andy mm-hmm. in particular. Yeah. Um, I'd like him to do his fight montages in a wheelchair, <laughs> so he could put so he could put Donga at ease that they're on even footing. I shouldn't say footing because his legs don't work. That they're on <laughs> even asses. <laughs> even wheels. I did it again when they crawl into the ring to fight each other. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Uh, it's weird that Donga wouldn't put up a promo picture like Worski did. That was yep. strange. I mean, there he is, you know, flexing it. There's his pale ass, his pale Canadian ass flexing for the camera. He's ready to fucking do it. <laughs> Signed the contract, sent him in, got him all done. Um, I, I don't know. Dong has gone on and on and about, you know, he's not internet people. He'll fight anybody fighting in real life is the greatest shit on earth. So he's going to look like a massive fucking fag if he doesn't show up. That's what I, that's my whole point. Like, he has to do it, right? Like, I mean, what will be his excuse after, you know, a year, you know, straight of talking about let's fight in real life, let's fight in real life. And then even this fight, he's saying, I'm going to just destroy Andy. He has no chance. You know, saying that over and over again, you can't not show up, right? I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm... Maybe he, I'm he has that. to show up. And then uh, yeah. somebody was saying that he wanted me to bet my channel on this. Yeah, that yeah. Was, uh, yeah that's what yeah. I heard. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, I think that you're remiss not to have done so, Jim, that you should bet your channel, of course. Well, here, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you <laughs> what, Donga, I'm willing to bet my channel. If you win, I'll delete it. It doesn't matter to me. But if Andy wins, you have to put on a fucking dress and lipstick and walk <laughs> up and down the boulevard after the fight telling people that you're a fucking $2 whore and you got your ass kicked by a coke <laughs> Yeah, and I want that. I want that filmed and put on the internet. I mean, you're so tough, right? You're not worried about losing or anything, so you put a fucking dress on like the pretty girl you are and walk up and down the boulevard like a whore, won't you? Oh, good God! That's my counter offer. Yeah, I, if he's I, willing to do that, I'll put my channel up. I don't give a shit. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I would, um, I'd spring for the lawyers to make that contract happen because yeah, I definitely <laughs> want to see that. I don't think that it's going to happen. I mean, I, th- I think it's all bullshit. I just think it's fucking gay to have a fucking real life fight. It's stupid. Okay, that's the whole point of the internet, that you're supposed to fight with your words to sound incredibly pompous, but no, that's basically it, right? I don't, I don't know. I don't, but wait, I, you don't want to see this? Come on, it's finally, I mean, it's still, it's like, I don't know, maybe I'm getting caught up. I've watched a lot of fights and boxing matches over my lifetime. Maybe I'm getting caught up in the hype, but I mean, I can't, at this point, I was very bearish on it for a while, saying it's not going to happen, it's not going to happen. Now that the contracts are signed, I've just, I've went all in on it so uh i'm very excited hopefully hopefully it takes place hey daisy could you be uh, like the, the 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 little you know, the the girl with the card you know between the rounds you should go to there you, you <laughs> you'd clean up yeah it, it would be it would be great <laughs> well i, I, I don't i'm sorry I you're the spot. for that you know <laughs> it's a very particular type of woman with a very particular build who's able to do that but thank you i take that as a as yeah, a, take it as a compliment I am actually, fellas, unfortunately going to have to bow out, and you will love why I have to do it. I have to cook a roast. Like a good like man. a good little I have to cook a roast by having friends over for dinner and I've seen the time and I, I need to put it on and chop the vegetables and do all sorts of, of womanly things. Okay. Um but thank you, thank you so much for having me though. This was, was... really, really fun. Um I'd love <laughs> It was really, it was educational, it was fun, it was a good chat, and um, I really hope we can do it again. It was great uh, to meet you yeah, guys, and thank to you, Coach. We'll Take speak to you soon, okay? Bye. 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 Uh, is she out? Yeah. Uh, I, I think, think the I whale think thing. Her out. I think the, I, I think only only be. took me saying faggot, <laughs> talking about eating shit, <laughs> and uh, that was like 10 minutes. That's a good record. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that, she was very that, polite like, about it, though. Oh yeah. Well, you know, she's a, a polite young woman. I, I, I think the world of her, to tell you the truth. I think that her content is really great, and so definitely go check out her content. I put the link in the description below. So anyway, um, oh, this fucking thing with Donga, he's a fucking idiot. I wanna, wh- I'm wondering about Godwinson. I want Godwinson back because he did that fucking video on me and he refuses to release it. And I want to see it. I want to see what the little shit has to say about me. Yeah. Um, or am I being too egotistical? Oh, well, why not? Yeah. But what's up with Godwinson? Why, why isn't he back? You know, did you, Jim, see that video that he made? Uh, no, but I mean, I, I you know I know Godwinson will make a channel, put stuff up, and then uh, kind of recede into the background and kind of do that like once every three to six months. Yeah, and it's kind of standard practice. Yeah, I, w- I wish he'd just like stay on the scene because I like the continuity of it. But anyway, um, what Donga and what other gay shit is going on? Because we've been going on for what an hour and twenty, I think. So let, let's. I just oh, 
sorry. Sorry to, to interrupt. I've got to do super chats because I've been remiss on the super chat issue. So let me do that really quick. Um, let me see. Wow, a lot of super chats. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. So is Ralph streaming the dog? Uh, you guys are going to, they're going to do a pay-per-view. Uh, Jackie Chun says, coming from a single mother, it's partly internal, like emotional instability, criminality, and then you learn female behaviors which make working with male environments difficult. Well said. Priyanshu Chatterjee, sorry if I'm mis mispronouncing that, Priyanshu. Coach, like your YouTube activities. Keep them up. Thank you, Priyanshu. Timothy Hazelo, Daisy, are you coming to America ever? I would love to hear you speak, meet you, and learn from you. You're awesome. Okay, Timothy, I'll pass that message along. Roman Vidyav Vidyayev, is the universe infinite or finite? I understand that it is finite, though expanding. Uh, Mechaflare O, 148 quack quack. Well said. Roman Vidyayev, I like turtles. Me too. Timothy Hazelow, he sexually identifies with whales? Maybe the fat acceptance feminist types are for him. Good point, uh, Timothy. And an unnamed source, Kitty Style is a Danish pole smoker. That is too obscure for me, but well said. Okay, sorry about that. Um, thank you very much to the Super Chatters. And uh, you guys there, or am I left alone? No, I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm just watching the restream. <laughs> Now, Coach, you're going to let the restream go on, aren't you? Because I know one guy in the call that's got an issue with that. What? No, I might, as well, I might as well talk about that. They thought I wanted it taken down. I did not. I told them the next day to restore it, so it's back up. Oh, so, what's the lore on that? Uh, what, what, what's that? Uh, some yeah, people thought yeah, I had us, the Give us the lore down. on that, Ralph. What, what happened? Well, the streaming people thought that they were just, like, restreaming my stream with nothing added to it. Uh, I guess they're a little protective, so uh, they took they took the restream down, and then the next day I saw that it had been taken down, and I messaged them and I said just let them, let them do what they want, and uh, they restored the channel and everything, so they're back. That's I, I, there you go. I, I, I just like to say publicly, you can restream my shit anytime you like. I'm a good guy. <laughs> All right, Caesar over here. That's why he got stabbed. All right, he's always starting to kill people. <laughs> I had it got restored because of me. I don't get any credit for that anyway. But yeah, they're back and it's all good. So okay, and and well, I I don't have anything to say to that. Um, what else have been going? You know, this is kind of like winding up. You know, I suck as a stream host. I'm just really awful at it. Um, I'm just not. Uh, I'm not a very interesting stream host, and I don't quite know how to do it and try to how to make it funny. And I always like admire other people's streams, and my own are just sort of like yeah. You know, the only thing I sort of like am good at right now as of late is the whole uh, shit stream videos. I'm enjoying those. Uh, those are a lot of fun. Oh, and I'm enjoying uh, Kraut and his uh, history lessons. That's That's been very interesting. That's, let me ask you something, guys. Why doesn't he just quit, poor fella? Oh, he's never going to quit. He's, uh, you're talking about Kraut? Yeah. Yeah, no, he's not going to quit. He, he's, he's, he's walked through the flames. He's had his little baptism by fire. Now he wants to play. He loses subscribers every time he posts a video, and his his videos get fewer and fewer views each time he posts. What exactly is he trying to win? What is there to be won, quite frankly? He's just trying to prove the point that you can't drive him off the internet at this. That's that's what this is all about right now with him. Oh man, that, that motherfucker is just insane. And the thing is, that the, the stupid videos that he makes about history are about as dumb as the ones that he made about uh, biology. I mean, I don't know anything about biology. I, I, haven't, I haven't watched any of them. I know he's doing like World War II shit, right? <laughs> Camps and Japan and stuff. Yeah. Ralph, have you seen any of this shit? Uh, so I saw he did a video, uh, was it yesterday on the Allied bombings yeah. were justified? Allied, or yeah. I didn't actually watch it, but I saw that he put it out. And I know his subs keep dropping and pretty soon he'll, looks like he's on the path below 100K, which yeah. according to... Uh, the Discord leak uh, is really fucking with him mentally, so hopefully that happens soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, he's it, the, the thought that he'll cross the 100,000 mark, which I personally think is in trivial. I mean, it was funny. And oh, and Jim, thanks for uh, putting up Susan in your last uh, Sunday fun day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I it was fucking hard I, to yeah, do. Yeah, I, I liked it. I, I liked it. Matt needs the piss taken out of him more. I mean, the, that was uh, some good stuff. No, it was hard to do that performance, to tell you the truth, because I kept cracking up, and uh, and it was just like really 
just hard. I, a couple of times you can spot that I was sort of like laughing because I couldn't keep it in. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and the light was fading. It was like a whole nightmare to shoot that fucker. But I'm so glad that it fit with Whitney Houston. It just, ah, it's just, you know, Kino experience. That's what I loved about it. But about, Such a great song, too. Man. Yeah, it is. Actually, I yeah. actually watched it on the way to Baltimore and almost drove off the road because I was laughing so hard. So it was, it was good stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. But no, about uh, Poor Kraut, he did a video, um, the one that he was talking about uh, historicism and historiography and shit like that. And, and he was talking about Voltaire and, uh, you know, and he's saying about Voltaire's opinion about the French Revolution, right? which is impossible because Voltaire died a decade before the French Revolution. So how the fuck could he have had an opinion about the French Revolution if he was safely dead? You know, and it was just like that kind of level of mistake, you know, and it was just so laughable. And I understood now why JF had gotten such a huge kick out of his uh, videos on biology because I'm incompetent in biology. I don't know a thing about biology, right? And, and so I just took, uh, when Kraut did his videos, I sort of like, well, it seems logical, some of the shit, but, you know, J JF really knew what he was talking about. Insofar as history and the stuff that he's talking about, I, which was my specialty, I can say unequivocally, he didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. He was just talking all kinds of bullshit, you know. And even the guy who bombed, who ordered the bombing of Dresden, Curtis LeMay, even he said that, if the Allies had lost the war, he would have been going to the gallows and, and, and hanging for war crimes for having done Dresden, right? I mean, he, the guy who did it thought that it was a war crime, okay? And Kraut doing his, I was just like, what is there to be won? I just, I just don't understand that. I mean, like, um, I don't he know. constantly talks about shit he doesn't know anything about. That's that's something that gets me like. If you, and there's no shame in not knowing everything or, or about a topic, but like, why, why do you keep doing videos about stuff you have not even really a baseline knowledge of? Uh, it's kind of baffling. But well, I actually, you know what? I, let me take that back. I, I do think I saw part of one of his initial World War II videos. Mm -hmm. Didn't he go to like a Holocaust camp? Yeah, I saw part of that. <laughs> yeah. One, the Holocaust yeah, but like, he, there's no stabilization, so like, yeah. it's shaking all over the fucking place as he's walking through this, and it's just, I, I saw like two minutes of that, and it's like, I'm, I'm done. This is where I hit out. No, yeah, yeah. It, 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 they're going to the the concentration camps, and see, there's nothing to be learned by going to the concentration camps. Quite frankly, I mean, you know, so if you go, you better shoot like good, good material. I mean, you're you're gonna use it while you're gonna have a, a voiceover, right? But like shaky footage of a concentration camp, what are you gonna get out of it? You're not gonna learn anything there because it's it happened 70 years ago. Anything to be learned from that is you can find it online or in textbooks or what have you. So you're only going there for the images. So if the images suck, what's the point? I, I, I don't get it. I, I don't get the man. Well, actually, I do get the man. He's living on his mother's dime, building models all day, sniffing that uh, the, the modeler's glue all day, and doing fucking nothing with his life. Jesus Christ. And he's 29 fucking years old. Get a fucking job, for crying out loud. I mean, geez, oh, I, I find it incredibly, incredibly frustrating. But uh, yeah, and I think that he's starting to have like uh, crazy ideations, to tell you the truth. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like planning on like, uh, you know, having his revenge on his enemies or some shit like that. But like, do you think he's going to go full Chatelet Strangler? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going kidding. out there and teaching people liberalistism the hard way? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think so. I, I think that he's going in that direction. That he's going to. I, I genuinely believe that. He's going to be going so insane, especially when he cracks the 100,000 mark in the wrong direction, of course. I think that he's going to go so out of his fucking mind that he's going to start thinking that he should, you know, you know, uh, direct action in the real world, you know. And, and he's going to justify it to himself with all kinds of weird, you know, nonsense shit. But yeah, I think that, I, I mean, I don't know if you guys think that I'm full of it. Or I'm, I'm, you know. Well, yeah, he's in, I, I don't know, is he like in Germany or Austria? I mean, there's not really yeah. much to lash out at in real life there, though. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty hard leftist, isn't it? Well, I personally think that he might show up at my door. <laughs> I, I honestly do. I, I was going to bring that up, Coach. You keep making these predictions. If anybody yeah. would want to lash out, it would probably be you. Yeah, so. I, I, I actually said so in one of my shit stream videos. I, I know that it sounds paranoid. I'm not a paranoid person. Uh, but I genuinely believe that he might flip his shit and hop on a plane to Ukraine and show up here and uh, God knows what. I, I, I am not kidding. Yeah. And I don't have a problem saying it. I don't have a problem if think, people think that I'm paranoid or out of my mind or something. But yeah, I get the vibe that the guy is going to lose his shit, you know, especially as people start peeling away from him. 
Because I think that by this point, a lot of his followers, a lot of his little coterie, they must think that he's out of his fucking mind for crying out loud. Well, how fucked up would you be if there's a knock on your door and you go to answer it and there's just a trout laying there? <laughs> like, is that... <laughs> Is that going to send you into like a fucking tizzy? <laughs> like, tizzy law. Here? Yeah, tizzy law. <laughs> that would be fucking funny. I mean, that would actually be kind of witty if he left the trout there. Yeah. You know, what would I do with the Coach trout? Fell asleep with the fishes is a- yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, if uh, if he left the trout at my doorstep, um, well, I'd probably, you know, fry it first, you know, and, and then I'd be like thinking, you know, so man, that was... I'd film it, you know. Oh, man, that would be fucking funny. You know, actually, I might make a video about it, you know. It, it would be fucking funny, yeah. But, no, I think that... Uh, <laughs> Just filming a guy running in and out of the forest in construction, uh, <laughs> construction worker outfit with fish in his hands. Yeah, yeah and Ray-Bans, you know, uh, Wayfarers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, uh, like, like the whole skeptic... Uh, 40 fucking cigarettes in his mouth. Yeah, pot of coffee. <laughs> Oh, poor crowd. Poor crowd. It's, it's that I, I, I have to admit that there's something grand about the self-destruction of a man's life like that. OK, I, I, I find it just hypnotic. I can't look away at this point. You know, and it's so that- it's so fucking self-inflicted with him, though. I mean, it's the group that he runs with it. Shit rat and the others that fuck up. Well, one, that he makes him do gay ops because they, they brought him into it. But two, that always fuck his gay ops up. Like, he'd be so much more successful, I think, on his own trying gay ops than he would with this group of fucking screw-ups. Uh, I, I no, I'll never understand it. I don't know why he tolerates their fucking complete and utter repeated failures. Well, no, it's that the guy's fundamentally dumb, you know? I mean, that was my mistake about him. I thought that he was like a clever guy, uh, just misdirected. And it took me a long time to realize, no, 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 he's just stupid. He's just a, a, <laughs> a, a Z low IQ. Yeah, exactly. Z low IQ. That's it. And so somebody stupid like that, yeah, he's going to do all kinds of stupid shit, you know, and surround himself with the wrong kind of people who just manipulate him or use him or abuse him as they see fit, you know, including uh, shit rat. Yeah. Yeah. What's happened with shit rat? Is he transitioning yet or what? Davina? I don't know. It's probably, you know, it's going to be a while till he can get that dick chopped off. It's still problematic (laughs) for him. But uh, one day, one day soon. I gave him a year, and I said that about a month ago. So he's got about eleven months before the transition happens. But it's coming. I know it's coming. Uh, I mean, you're unironic. I take it. I'm absolutely unironic. That's the kind of dude that's going to become a tranny to use that as a shield for criticism. Yep, that is absolutely what he's going to do. Wow, good God! I, chopping your dip, dick off. I mean, the, I'm going to put it. Troll shielding Troll by chopping your dick off. That's a little extreme. Well, he's playing catch up. This is shit SA was doing back five, six years ago. This is weird Twitter shit. But now he's, I guess, struck upon the same idea that, oh, my God, if I become a super PC liberal tranny, I can get away with fucking anything. And I, I guarantee he's going to go that route. Ethan, what do you think? He hangs around with a ton of trannies, too. Yeah, I mean, it seems, to me, it seems likely. Yeah. And I mean, he, like I said, he surrounds himself with all these trannies. He, it looks like he's already becoming one if you just take a look at his physical transformation as well. So, And he had that big, long, I think this was in the summer. Uh, he had a long uh, tweet thread. I don't know if Jim remembers this, where he's like questioning his sexuality and he's talking about all this discovery he's went through. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's I think it's likely, yes. Wow. Yeah, it, it, it's it. They they feed each other with their delusion. <clears throat> when you get a group like that, where one or two of them transition, they all start doing it. So Davina's hanging out with a bunch of people that this is the new thing, and Davina's going to do it. And what's the suicide rate again? Forty percent. Yeah, something like one percent. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. half of them aren't going to make it back. So it's a coin flip, David. I don't know if you want to take that risk. Actually, I think that um, uh, uh, shit rat is kind of like a cockroach in that regard. He'll survive it, you know. Uh, yeah, in, in five years or something, he'll detransition or whatever they're calling it. But I'm just wondering if he'll, <laughs> if he'll like uh, chop it off before he detransitions. You know, you know what we should do? We should basically start saying to them, you know, if you if you haven't chopped it off, you're not a real tranny, and you're transphobic for not chopping it off. See if that will get him in the direction we want him to go. Your that penis was- is cultural appropriation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. You need to get rid of it if you really truly believe in the cause. You think he'd fall for it? They already tell each other that. So he's being fucking wined and dined on that kind of messaging. Oh, my. Oh, God. I I just can't believe it. But 
I, I read recently, unfortunately I don't have the link uh, on hand, chat, maybe you guys can help me out, that there's like this uh, this article, this study that's coming out that a lot of girls are transitioning, are, are becoming transsexuals because of basically group dynamics of just hanging out together and just convincing themselves in a closed bubble that they should transition, that it's a good idea. And these girls, like groups of, uh, of um, uh, you know, between five and, and ten girls wind up sort of like egging each other on. Because one of the things that they've discovered is that the group that is most heavily transitioning are teenage girls, you know, between the ages of you know what this, uh, 15 you know what this and 23. Is? It, what? It's what the same shit that, you know what this is? It's the same shit that happened in the 80s and 90s where chicks would be bisexual when they were in college. You know what I mean? It yeah, was but the that phase was sexier. That, went through. that was sexier. Yeah. I'd, I'd bang a lesbian. I wouldn't bang a girl transitioning. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same fucking shit. Yeah, yeah. It's the, oh, you know, it's, a, it's the end trendy thing to do. Um, and then they fall out of it once they leave fucking college and aren't, you know, taking beer bong hits while the fucking quarterback fucks them in the ass on a pool table. Yeah, but here's the thing. See, uh, if you go lesbian, if you're a, you know some 18-year-old co-ed, right, and, and away from home for the first time and go lesbian, see, it, it doesn't render you sterile, but transitioning does. And this is serious shit. You know, all these uh, human replacement, horm hormone replacement th um, treatment drugs, what have you. Sorry about that. Uh, they render you sterile. Okay, both sexes, by the way. I and mean, th this is some serious shit that you're fucking with. This isn't like dropping acid or some shit like that. This is like really permanent. And I feel... We, you should take a look at uh, Games Done Quickly. Uh, you can watch the progression of this happen to that uh, group, right? They, they do uh, speed runs and shit for charity money. It's like an event that happens, uh, you know, a couple times a year. Uh, but if you look over the last five years, it started with like one tranny. But now it's gotten to the point where like, they will eventually have dilation stations. There are so many of them. And they're put front and center. Like, it, it, it spreads. It gets into the community, and then it spreads. Yeah. Because they bring in more, and then they influence others. And the next thing you know, everybody's Narcissa right, and they look like they've been beaten with a shovel, and their hair is falling out. No, I, I, I find it... Well, there's a reason that 40% of these poor people wind up killing themselves, but I'm kind of interested in, in, in the percentages insofar as people who truly weren't suffering from uh, sexual dysphoria. Because y y y we have to recognize that there are two classes of people right now. There are, there are the people who truly have this problem, and I pity them, quite frankly. And then there are the people who are doing it for fashion's sake or for group dynamics sake, you know, that, that they're being literally pressured to, to remain fashionable and transitioning. How many well, yeah, they, are going they to have a themselves? term for that. I mean, they call it transgender. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's doing it for the the social value of it. Yeah. How many of those are um, going to wind I, up killing themselves? I I don't know. It depends on how committed they are. I mean, I think with Davina, it's not that he's a transgender. I I don't know what you'd call it, but he's he's becoming it to shield himself from criticism. That there is a subsect of people that do that. Trans uh, shield. You know, a trans shield. I mean, it's kind of like um, Sargon did with claiming he was black. <laughs> like, I'm black, so you can't call me a racist. Well, I'm a tranny, you can't say I'm whatever. But yeah, well, he, he was transracial. Yeah, I know. Um, oh, God, that was fucking funny. You know, yeah. The, the, but yeah. What y'all are saying with the with the social trends, I mean, there was a study that came out in, in late August on this uh, where it talked about teen, teens and young adults uh, who identify as LGBT. A lot of it's just peer, peer pressure. Uh, so there was a whole study on that, and the person who who did it caught a lot of shit over it because it was, you know, their left-wing colleagues weren't too happy with it, so. I I don't know. Uh, you guys been keeping up with TikTok? Oh, God, oh God I'm afraid to ask, what is that? I, I've gotten really interested in it. Like, I, at first, I thought it was just going to be uh, a shittier version of Vine. It's a Chinese-run company, kind of a mobile thing. You put up short form videos. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have, like, a really... I, I don't know how to explain it. The, it's a majority of teenagers using it, but... Like, there's some weird shit going on on TikTok I can't really put my finger on, but I have a feeling TikTok more than Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube is going to play a big part in the upcoming election. Did you see Boogie on there? I saw that. No, I'm talking about, like, the kids that are putting up videos where they want furries to be put in gas chambers. <laughs> no, and, I haven't seen that. <laughs> uh, they're, like, girls that, like, they're, they, like, put on extra clothing, and they're like, we've got to help the boys out for No Nut November. Uh, another one where they talk about how it's a woman's place to make sandwiches. Like, it's really, it's a really weird mixture. It's kind of like poll posting in teenage video form. 
and the weird thing is like I, I'm I'm split on it because I can kind of see what the mentality of the user base is like, but it's a Chinese company, right? So how is that going to factor into the election? Because I, I get the feeling that's going to have a lot of social media credit with the upcoming election. But if Trump is doing, you know, uh, what, what I, tariffs and that kind of shit with China, will they clamp down on pro-Trump shit, uh, you know, during election season? I, I have no idea how that's going to play out. I know the popularity of it's definitely exploded. I haven't really investigated, but I saw Boogie on there acting foolish. I, I didn't realize there were like you know poll posting going on. There oh no, too. they've got they've got one like yeah. There's one that was up. I, I was watching like compilation videos of this shit, like where they put like something on the door like free tits and shit like that, and then the guy walks in and he shuts the door and it says gas chamber, and they start laughing. <laughs> Nazi music plays. So like you know, it's it's a different shit you could never put on Twitter or Facebook, and the Chinese just don't fucking care. Yeah, they don't give a shit. It's all about money for them. Uh, and yeah, I don't I don't really think that they're probably going to crack down on it. Uh, maybe, though, like you said, in order to hurt Trump. I didn't think about that, but possibly. I, I haven't looked into it that much. I've just seen some goofy clips on Twitter about it. Uh, but I, I didn't realize there was all that stuff going on there. I just like how much they hate furries. I mean, that was the hook for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, they amazing. fucking hate them. Yeah, it's pretty great. I, I, I'm digging that. So what's uh, what's the update on the furry situation? The 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 one well, Kiro he got arrested. Uh, am I wrong? Uh, Kiro's under police investigation. One guy was investigated and let go, uh -huh. and then apparently, from what people are saying, the South American guy that did the ants in the ass of the animal uh, has been arrested. What? <laughs> what was that? He's in yeah. Cuba. Cuba, right? I think he's in Cuba. Oh, it's right? South America or Cuba? Yeah, some yeah. fun. Whatever. It all blends <laughs> together. What the fuck <laughs> happened? What ants up some animal's ass? I, oh god. Well, yeah, they they were in more to. It wasn't just bestiality. It was like torture. So they they oh. tortured animals with yeah. fire ants and yeah. other horrific shit. Yeah. Uh, but this guy was involved in some of the really grotesque stuff. And from what I understand, he's been arrested. So, or it's speculated he has, but it depends on if that really is him. Jesus Christ. There's a couple of articles about it, and like. Um, uh, whatever diaspora media because you know Cuba they don't even have a free press there but uh, some people outside of Cuba run like media stuff and I saw a couple of articles about it yesterday uh, Josh from Kiwi Farms talked about it a little bit uh, as well I think on his stream yesterday so yeah yeah I mean I, I like I said I, I haven't really looked too much into it I've been playing video games so uh, there's a lot of shit that's happened over the last week that I've kind of somewhat uh, been paying attention to okay what else because I've I've been I've had real life shit pop up, and so my past week has been a little bit. Uh, uh, nice stream. What else? Give me topics. I don't know what to talk <laughs> about. What, what, am I, what do you want me to say? You know, I I said I have said that I I suck at streaming. It's a I like the experience, the excitement of the live experience of doing it, um, and and I prepare shit. I actually have like notes and crap of like what I'm going to talk about and all the rest of it. And they usually f go out the window because I realize that. Oh, yeah, it's kind of like interesting for a podcast, but for a stream, it's sort of stupid. Oh, okay. Dull. Have you talked about the migrant caravan? Because they've reached the border now, right? So yeah, you've yeah. seen the picture of the tear gas getting shot at them? Yeah, exactly. And, and there's so do you, think that's, do you think that's a photo op? Because, I mean, I've seen pictures, standing pictures of where you can see photographers placed and the people aren't running away from the tear gas. They're running at the photographers. And there are videos up on live leaks mm -hmm. of Syrians faking attacks on themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It really reminds me of that, like where they'd yeah. have kids pose for injuries and then the kid would get up and walk around and laugh. Yeah. And like the uncut videos of those are up on live leaks. So I know that kind of shit happens. Yeah. And then you're seeing this migrant caravan stuff. Oh, my God, the kids are getting, you know, tear gassed. Make sure to run towards a reporter rather than away from the fucking wall. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I do believe that most of the images that are being shown on, on the mainstream media are probably doctored or fake somehow or staged somehow. I mean, yeah, but I learned that when I was living in Chile because I would see these uh, foreign photographers like taking pictures of like protests against Pinochet, right? And in the picture, and that would appear in Time or Newsweek or wherever the fuck, it would be like, it, it seemed like hundreds of people. But, you know, you, when you were there, there were like a dozen guys with signs and, and everybody else walking about their business in downtown, right? And these a dozen people in the photographer would say, get closer together, get closer together, you know? It's like, Jesus Christ. So... Yeah, I, I, I've I've seen that since I was a teenager of recognizing the the everything that you see on the MSM is probably a bull, bullshit. But as to this uh, caravan and the images, I haven't seen it because I'm in Ukraine, so I don't get MSM. Uh, oh no, I, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I mean there there's some news stories up of it. I mean you can see some of the pictures. It's fat chick wearing a fucking frozen T-shirt lugging around two eight-year-olds in diapers, which raises a whole fuck ton of questions about what's going on with that. But 
Um, I, I'm curious yeah, what your my, both of your opinions on this would be then. Do you think Trump will, now that the media is doing what the media, everybody knew they were going to do, waiting for the opportune time to take a photo, do you think he's going to back down on his stance? Or do you think he's going to say fire another round at these faggots? I don't personally think he's going to back down, but I, I do take what you're saying into account, too, that, uh, I mean, and I've heard other people just mow him down, just, you know, get him out of there, whatever it takes. Uh, but also, like, if there was some massive violence and a bunch of people were executed down there on the border, that would actually probably be a PR uh, boon for the left. So uh, maybe think twice about that. Uh, I don't think he's going to back down in terms of letting them in. Uh, but, well, didn't um, didn't Mexico offer them citizenship and they turned Mexico down, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they yeah, said, yeah. no, we don't want to live Did in you see the mayor of Tijuana with the yeah. make Tijuana great again hat on yeah. walking around the other day, too. That was pretty good stuff as well. Yeah, no, I think that Trump's only out for this situation is to cut some deal with Mexico and have them bottled up in Mexico. And never actually cross the border, you know, catch and release back to Mexico, not back into the United States. You know, I mean, I think that that's his only out. Uh, I think also that if he caves, his base is really, really going to yeah. be pissed uh, uh, because yeah, this, this has become an issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that he's. I, he, I hope that he's smart enough to realize that his base, his support, is is really going to turn on him if he caves on this issue. Uh, you know what? If he if he was smart, what I think he would do hmm? as a as a you know way of tabling this and talking about building his wall. Yeah, is to show footage of the migrants at the walls that exist. Because I've seen nothing but video and photos of people crawling between gaps that are wide enough to walk almost, you know, full shoulder length through, mm -hmm. kicking over fucking crappy little concrete rebar fences, mm -hmm. hopping over fences that are like three feet tall. If anything explains why you need a better border wall, it's That's showing it. people at the fucking border going right over through and under your fucking walls that already exist. Yeah. 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 And, well, the, the thing to me is that... The Democrats are in a weird position um, because they they recognize Pelosi recognizes that the only way that, it, that the Democrats can win in 2020 is that they show like actual progress that the Dems are doing things for the people as opposed to showboating and doing the socialist shit and and identity politics and Ocasio Cortez kind of crap right so they they want to do this infrastructure bill if I were Trump I'd say sure let's do your infrastructure bill and I'll I'll add a few more tidbits to that bill but you have to pay for my wall. Uh, and, and make it a sine qua non, sort of like, you know, we'll do the infrastructure stuff that you want, Dems, but you got to build my wall. And that has to be, you know, top of the priority list and we'll do all the other shit. And so that way, if the Democrats say no, then they look like, uh, you know, they don't care about the border and they don't care about working people. So it, it would put them in a box. I mean, it would seem to me that that, so far as the system that we currently have, that would be the smart move. I don't know if uh, Trump's going to do that. I don't know. Maybe he'll take like I think it was Truman Wright with the Do Nothing Congress, where he basically was like, "These guys are a bunch of assholes. Yeah. Uh, fuck them. I'm not yeah. going to sign shit until they do what I want." Yeah, that that actually worked for Truman, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah, but he had to hold out for quite a while to make them get so much bad press they've eventually buckled. Well, he nearly lost the the 48 election over that, right? So, but so, it worked. It was a hell of a gambit. Yeah, it was a big gambit. Do you think that Trump is nervy enough to pull a gambit like that? I don't know if he's interested in the second term, and he might just do it for the fuck of it. What? I'm like, yeah, a second, no, he's definitely going to do a second term. I, no, I, I, but, well, yeah, I, I, I'm not doubting that he would run, but I don't know if his heart is in it. I think he's seen the reality of what it's like to be at the head of the power structure in Washington, and uh, it's just a clusterfuck from every direction. <laughs> yes, it is. I, there, there are nothing but leaks, people stabbing you in the back, the Congress won't do shit, your party won't do shit. You're constantly fighting with fucking people. And so, Mueller's trying to fuck him over too. Yeah. yeah, everybody's up his ass. So I don't know if his heart's in it, but maybe a Truman approach would work. Maybe if he just you know lock, sock, and barrel, fuck it. Let's let's see how far we can push this. And uh, if I'm going down, I'll take them with me. Kind of mentality, maybe. Yeah. Plus, a lot of the Democrat voter base is uh, dependent on you know social welfare and stuff like that. Programs, not just welfare itself, but social spending and. Uh, you know, urban spending and stuff like that. So if that if that spigot gets cut off for too long, uh, they they'll really be putting the bond there. So, God, who knows? Uh, who do you think's gonna Who do you think's gonna run on the Dem side? Do you think Hillary's Kamala gonna get Harris. it? Or do you think we'll go Kamala Harris. I'm calling it right now. Kamala Harris is gonna be the nominee. Isn't that that dumb fucking twenty year old that doesn't know shit about Palestine? No, and Israel that's Ocasio Cortez. You're you're mixing up your women of color. 
God, uh, sexist pig. In California. I actually saw Sherrod Brown talking about running today. Uh, now he's a you know a white male from Ohio, so I don't know if he could get it. But actually, I think that would be a pretty good candidate for the Dems. I, I don't know if he could get through the primaries, but I saw him talking no, about today. Be a check. Obviously, be a check. Elizabeth Warren's going to run, probably yeah. Gillibrand. Yeah. It's no, going to be no. a massive Gil- Gil- Nobody's going to vote for Warren. Why would she waste her time? No, no. Gillibrand I don't think she could get it either. But. Yeah. She can't run because she's up for re-election. And Gillibrand is smart enough to realize that Dem is not going to win in 2020, or the odds are long. So she, she'll, uh, she'll uh, wait until uh, 2024, because her Senate seat is for re-election in 2020. And so she'll like, support whoever's nominated. But I'm betting, I mean, absolutely. I think in New York moment. you can do both, though, right? You can run for president and I run for your Senate seat. I, I don't yeah, know. In a lot of states you can, so I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Uh, the field's going to be massive, though. So. Yeah, but I, I'm betting Kamala Harris. I think that what's going to happen is that it's going to it's going to be a woman thing. That it's going to be everybody's going to agree that it has to be a woman. And I think that that congresswoman from um, from Hawaii, what's her name? She she could be a contender, kind of Tulsi uh, Gabbard. Yeah, but I think that uh, it's going to be like uh, between uh, what's her name, uh, uh, Warren Elizabeth Warren, you know, Pocahontas and um, Kamala Harris. And, Warren's uh, just terrible candidate though like jim says she's so shr- even hillary comes off as more likable than elizabeth warren she's just like this prof- professorial tone and just so shrill always pointing and you know running i don't know i just don't think that that's gonna win did I mean, somebody in your think. fucking chat actually say bernie sanders is a threat potentially no bernie <laughs> sanders is a threat to nothing he lets fat black women steal microphones from him he's not going to get anywhere yeah he i agree I would have lost all respect for Sanders if I was a Sanders supporter when he bent the fucking knee to Hillary when she stole that shit from him. He should have fucking gone in swinging. Yeah. Fucking it. Fucking it. Yeah. I mean, why? Why did he bend the knee like that? I mean, I, I, I think that it speaks to something deep in his soul, that he's fundamentally a weak, you know? I mean, because they stole it. And, and it came out later that they actually had stole it. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And Hillary that's is definitely why, in the way. Oh yeah, that's why he was crying. If you look back at the footage, mm-hmm. he's literally in tears as this is going on. And I know that he knew. Yeah. And absolutely he got fucked and stabbed in the back. And I will never understand why he didn't fucking raise hell and uh, go for blood on that. Because he's basically a cuck. I mean, that guy is the definition of a cuck. Okay? But look, the, Hillary is going to run. And that's going to be fucking hilarious. I mean, I can't wait for that. Because she's going to pull out all the stops. It's going to be fucking ugly. And she's going to fling so much shit at the other candidates because she's going to recognize that this is the last stand, you know, uh, of the of the Clinton of the Clintonistas. Right. And oh, man, I can't wait to see that. That shit show is going to be spectacular. That That's my my fearless prediction. Yeah. Do you think it pisses Hillary off that more Bushes have been in office than Clinton's? Do you think that's what this is about? <laughs> Perhaps. No, I, also, I, I think it pisses her off because she put in all that time with Bill and stood by him throughout all the allegations. Like, I'm going to make this work for me. Got to be a senator. Uh, you know, did, bided her time, lost to Obama. She's like, okay, I'm going to get in after. It's all right. Just chill out. And then lost again. And now you have people telling her, why don't you just go away, Hillary? Even people on the left, like, why are you still here? Why are you, You're hurting us uh, politically. Why won't you go away? Uh, that's why I do think if she does run, there's going to be a lot of heat on her from the like the actual left wing of the Democrat Party. So uh, I still think uh, there's a good chance she will because uh, she wants to be president. So, bad. you know, speaking of left wing Democrat parties, uh, who was her assistant? Right. That was married to Wiener. Oh, uh, yeah. Huma Abedin. Huma Abedin. OK, what? The, OK, I, I was following this and then it completely dis- disappeared from the news cycle. And I've always been curious. Uh, Wiener and Huma Abedin and the Clintons. They were somewhat tangentially related to a couple of guys that were foreigners that were working as tech people in the Congress. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. What the fuck happened with that? Because that they were they had all this weird (laughs) shit, right? Fake identities, lots of money going in and out of the country, connections to basically terrorist cells. Yep. And they they had access to stolen fucking uh, Congress computers, and they're getting into systems and doing shit. And that's a big story for two days. And suddenly nobody's talking about it. It's completely disappeared. There was never any follow up on it. It just got memory old. Yep. Yep. Uh, the the story on that. A1. Is that yeah, we go. it was uh, I, I forget the name of the I, for, I forget the exact relationship. But these uh, Pakistanis, these brothers, they were uh, essentially Pakistani intelligence officers. That's basically what they were. And so they were passing along all kinds of information to the Pakistani government. And of course, the Pakistani government is, is split between those who are pro-terrorist and those who are not, right? And so it, it's like, 
what the fuck? It's really clown world. And the fact that those people weren't prosecuted and the people who knew about that weren't prosecuted. And hey, we've got, uh, what's her name? Uh, um, I forget if it's Pelosi or, uh, or Feinstein's chauffeur was a Chinese Feinstein. agent. Yeah, oh, that's right, right. I'm, I'm sorry. W was it related to Aberdeen or was it related to Wasserman? Somebody in chat said it was Wasserman. Debbie Wasserman. Wasserman. Oh, Wasserman that's Schultz. right. Yeah. yeah, and she was the one that helped steal it for fucking Clinton yep. from Sanders. So yeah. you'd think this would have kind of an impact. How did that maybe play into what was going on with that? You're so naive. Yeah, again, <laughs> fucking memory hold, right? Just, just gone. Yeah, I mean, come on. It's the Clintons. What do you think? It's Wasserman Schultz. It's that whole crowd. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm just wondering, did these A1 brothers have barbells fall on their heads? Like, is that what happened? And that's why nobody did they get robbed and shot in the head twice and nothing was taken? Is that what we're talking <laughs> it was, about? Yeah, robbed and shot twice in the back of the head and it was suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know about that story. Yeah, I, I think it's something like that, you know. But uh, I had heard about uh, the Anwan, the Anwan brothers. That's what they were called. I haven't heard anything about that. I haven't heard anything about the, um, the Feinstein's uh, driver, who is a Chinese uh, secret service agent. And the other thing, also, that they don't really want to talk about is that a whole pe bunch of people at the NSA who are of Chinese descent are likely working for the Chinese government, and I mean, like real Manchurian candidate kind of shit. And and uh, nobody really wants to talk about it, but it's it, the odds of that are astronomically high because they keep turning up and uh you know they don't know what to do about it. I, I i love the spy shit did you ever um i think it was uh wires that wikileaks released did you ever see the south african and israeli spy wires that were released from wikileaks no what was that all I, about? I'm, I'm i'm fairly certain this was what it was it was a story that i read uh that was posted when this leaked uh, essentially but um they fucking hated each other all right Right. And they would basically kidnap the spies that they found and kill each other <laughs> in creative and imaginative ways. But from what I understand, they took an Israeli spy and fed him to like fucking alligators or something. It was some wild fucking shit. Are you talking white South know. Africans or, or black South Africans? Black, like South African government, South Africa. Yeah. Why would they hate each other so much? I don't know. They, the South Africa fucking hates so Israel. South Africa, um, the ANC is a long time supporter of the PLO uh, and stuff like that because they're like whatever brothers in the brothers in the struggle or whatever. So uh, they have a lot of heat with uh, Israel because of that. Oh, that's funny. Fed him to the alligators. That's pretty. Cool. I wish I wish I could find <laughs> where this. This was yeah. This was around the time the wires got leaked from WikiLeaks, and the stories started popping up about these these two groups going against each other because they kept fucking sending spies over. But it's just it's a two groups you wouldn't necessarily think are going to try to gun for each other that are fucking going. I love that spy shit. That's always entertaining. No, I I think that that's just. Just wild. Uh, oh, by the way, what do you think of talking about WikiLeaks? What do you all think of uh, Assange is actually going to be indicted? What the fuck, man? I mean, he didn't do anything in the United States. I think it's absurd. And I think that that is much worse than the Jim Acosta shit that the press is freaking out over. Because Assange was actually releasing pertinent news. And he, he published stuff that was worthwhile, that should have been in the public domain or, or uh, under public scrutiny. And the fact that he's going to be prosecuted, even though he's not an American citizen, his revelations occurred outside the borders of the United States, and therefore the United States does not have any jurisdiction over what he did. How the hell are they going to square that circle? You know what I'm saying? Well, I think Trump should just issue a blanket pardon of Assange. I don't know if he'll actually do it, but uh, that's that's what I wish he would do. I, I agree. Also, Assange sitting in that embassy. What is how many years has it been now? Six, seven six. years? I don't know. It's it's six. been a long time. Six yeah. years. Yeah, I I don't see how he's doing it. I I would almost just at this point just come out just to get out of that embassy. Of course, you're going to be put in a cage somewhere else. So well, he's going to get picked. I mean, even if even if uh, Trump gives like a, a blanket waiver, he's going to get picked up. Uh, they want him in Britain. They want him in yeah. what is it? Sweden. They want they want like four or five countries want his ass. Yeah. So I mean, even if America take you know takes it off the table, he's going to get nabbed by somebody. He's fucking stuck in there. Well, I think. Well, I should. I should say the hologram is stuck in there because he's dead. <laughs> he's been dead for a while. We all know this. <laughs> and the new Ecuadorian uh, power structure there don't really want him there in the first place. So I don't know. We'll see how. Yeah, he's a fucking asshole. Him. You know, he's just yeah. A, yeah he's a, a, somebody called him a stone in their shoe. Yeah, yeah. The, the new president of Ecuador, Lenin, whatever he's called. Yeah, he's his Lenin. actual name is Lenin. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. His first name is because he's you know red yeah. diaper baby. Yeah, but. Um, no, I think that uh, the, the, he should have taken his lumps. And I think that he's an object lesson as to just take the hit. Just take the hit up front and don't wait around. 
And him trying to um, find, uh, you know, asylum in the Ecuadorian embassy, that was foolish. I think that just uh, standing tells you, sure, arrest me. Because back in 2012, what would have happened? He would have gotten arrested, there would have been a big brouhaha, and the Obama administration would have caved because it would have looked really bad for them to actually do anything about Assange. And they would have like moved him here, moved him there, done a little you know song and dance, and then you know like Chelsea Manning, you know he would. I, 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 I disagree. I don't think uh, in his situation you can take the hits and walk through it. I mean, they would have brought him in initially for the bullshit charges that he had, right? But it would have been used as a fracturing point for WikiLeaks. It would have been used as a way to try to break him to get him to infiltrate to fuck with what they do. Uh, they would have added more stuff on top of it. He would have sat in a prison cell. It's not. Chelsea Manning is nothing compared to Assange and WikiLeaks and what they do. Like, I don't, I don't think there's a way for him to walk through it. Um, he's, he's fucking stuck. He can't leave that room. He's going to be there until he dies or until somebody can secretly, you know, smuggle him out of the Ecuadorian fucking embassy into, I don't know, no, some they Asian country or they African country. Yeah. Because I, I passed by, when I was living in London, I passed by that location, you know, just some, basically a sightseeing kind of opportunity, right? There were cops all over the goddamn place. They, they are sitting, waiting for him to try to sneak out or anything like that. And I'm sure that they must have some sort of, you know, monitors, cameras, what have you, to make sure that he can't get out from some sort of underground exit or some, you know, some discreet exit that the that all embassies have. So, yeah, I think that he's stuck in that box uh, presumably forever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's let's be honest. He's a dead man walking. And that, that's what Assange is. They're never going to let him go. He, he's either going to be dead or he's going to be sitting in that room until he dies. But that's what's been decided. Well, unfortunately, he never uh, um, he, he threw shit in everybody's direction. I mean, he, he, he was like he, he never got a base of support that would actually champion him because the liberals want him. The conservatives want him. Everybody wants him. I mean, I wants him in prison. I mean, OK, he doesn't have any friends. And for a guy in that kind of situation, politically speaking, that's a disaster. And he burned a lot of his friends. Uh, especially in England, true. When when uh, when he you know uh, when he skipped out on bail, and a lot of people took the financial hit. It wasn't so much the money; it was the fact of it. You know, and I think that you know he, well, he have any so, so much stuff from so many countries. It's like Jim said. I, I would just like to see Trump pardon him just for the you know the optics of it. Uh, but as far as it actually keeping him out of jail, uh, oh yeah, we're we're talking about jail, but you know. Yeah. I look what the Russians did with what was it, polonium pellets and shit to spies that <laughs> oh, run their sure. mouth, they'd fucking tap them with an umbrella and then the asshole would die from radiation <laughs> yeah. three days later. Yeah. Like they don't fuck around. And he's yeah, he's that was god damn it. Yeah. Spy versus yeah, he's spy put shit. Himself, yeah, he, well he's put himself on a list where he's gonna you know, if he if he leaves that place, he's dead. So I, I don't know what he's gonna do. I really don't. No, uh, I'm kind of curious about uh, England. Well, you know, uh, Ethan, your your better half is is over there. I'm curious That's about true. the whole Brexit situation. Um, I don't see how May is going to get Brexit through uh, Parliament. I think that there's a better, you know, 50 50 chance that the Conservative government collapses next month, uh, and they either do call an early election or have a new leader. Uh, but that being said, I really don't know. The EU's already said they're not going to negotiate another Brexit plan. So uh, is Brexit even going to happen at this point? I think that there's also a chance that they do some type of other. Uh, oh, I'm method. sorry. Your, your, your chat's correcting me. Yes, the umbrella thing was rice in their thing. I'm thinking of Litvinenko, uh, the guy that literally was killed with fucking radiation poisoning. Yeah, they, they put it in his tea. But no, no, no the, umbrella tea, guy, yeah. the, the umbrella with the pellet gun thing, that was in the 70s. That was like a USSR kind of uh, shit. Some defector that they off that way. Uh, let me look it up real quick. But yeah, they they um, they killed a guy with a with a pellet gun. Yeah. Yeah, it's an umbrella right in his like thigh or something. Yeah. And he thought he just got bumped into, and then uh, he's dead. Yeah, umbrella uh, poison. Well, the Russians just tried to poison somebody in the UK earlier this year. I mean, allegedly the uh, script script balls or whatever. Uh, so they're known to go pretty hard. Yeah. Oh God, that damn! They it wasn't even a spy that they offed. It was a fucking novelist, uh, Georgi Ivanov Markov, Bulgarian. Uh, killed in September 11th of 1978. Um, he was originally worked as a novelist and playwright in his native country of Bulgaria until his defection in 68. After relocating, he worked as broadcaster, journalist for BBC and Radio Free Europe and West Germany's uh, Deutsche Welle. Markov used... Uh, uh, Wait, wait, wait. Didn't he? Did he? Didn't he write like a book saying that like uh, uh, Russian officials are like gay or something? Like he did something that really pissed them off. I don't know, but the thing is, he he was assassinated on a London street via a micro-engineered 
pellet containing ricin fired into his leg from an umbrella wielded by someone associated with the Bulgarian Secret Service. Oh, it was a Bulgarian op, you know, yeah. It has been speculated that they asked the KGB for help. Man, that, that is just... I, I don't know why they would kill a writer. I always think it's stupid to kill somebody like that. Um, I mean, for, of course, the morality of it, I'm opposed to the you know, indiscriminate murder of anybody. But uh, just the practicality. Well, why? It, did it work, though? I mean, were people <laughs> writing the same shit afterwards or they were looking for motherfuckers with umbrellas on the street? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if it were today's London, they'd probably prohibit umbrellas from now on, you know? Good they'd God. give them a medal and say how diverse that was. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But, oh, my God. Yeah, so... No, I mean, like, like, like the, the, the Assange thing. I mean, just cut the guy loose. I mean, I, I see no purpose in, in having this. Who is going to be convinced? Who is, what is there to be won? I, I, that's what I always think in, in situations like the Assange case. And insofar as the, the Brexit situation, you know, what's there to be won by this deal? The deal is horrible. I mean, have you guys even looked at it? What uh, what deal? The Brexit, Brexit deal that, yeah, that May is terrible. pushing. It's oh, the horrible. Brexit deal where they've got to pay sixty billion pounds and they have to abide by billion. the laws and all the other crazy shit. Yes. Indefinitely. And no representation in the EU Parliament. Wait, as was well. it thirty? I thought it was. I thought they were asking for like sixty-two. No, thirty-nine billion. I thought that that was the agreed upon number. Chat, if you guys know, uh, yeah, I thought it was thirty-nine billion, and they have to be part of the customs union, but they can never leave unless the EU approves their leaving. So it's like yeah. it's like the worst of all possible. I mean, it's worse than being in the EU. What the fuck? The These e guys are fucking. The EU lost. and and Britain have to both agree on their leave. Yeah, you're you're there. right. It is 39 billion. I don't know where I got 62 from. It doesn't Maybe matter. Sure. <laughs> it's absurd amount anyway. You know. But Jesus Christ, I, I I don't quite understand. And they kept saying that Theresa May was a you know bloody difficult woman. The woman is a fucking idiot. You know, and, and to tell you the truth, I'm really disappointed in Reese Mogg because he was not able to kill the Queen. You know, I mean, uh, what the fuck? If you're going to if you're going to make a blow, if you're going to go for the Queen, you got to kill her dead. You know? So I, what I'm curious about is this takes place in March of next year. Right. But if it really is Brexit in name only, are the Brits still under obligations to follow Article 13 and 11? I mean, is Europe going to go? We have to talk about this eventually. I mean, is Europe going to go dark in a couple of months if they fucking pass this thing? Because YouTube has said they're not letting you upload or stream if you're from Europe on YouTube anymore. Like, that's their solution to avoiding the copyright issue. What? Run that by me again? It, you, they're cutting Europe off. It's going to be fucking segregated. They can't deal with the new copyright laws under Article 13 and 11 with the link tax and anybody being able to basically hit you for anything. You're done. Really? Oh, man. Yeah, they've been bitching about it uh, a lot lately. I'm starting to see why why uh, Sargon went to the uh, EU Parliament. There was so involved with this. Uh, well, no, he went I mean, to LARP. He, was, he went to LARP. It was the excuse to. Well, that too. But I mean, uh, you know, if they suddenly suddenly he can't upload or do any streams anymore, I can see that 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 eating into the old uh, the old wallet there. Well, I mean, see, that I see, uh, Coach, how are you going to get your videos to us? I mine is all original content. I don't have to worry about it. Oh, you're well, seeing Ukraine's you're not in the EU. Right? <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? No, I, I mean, first of all, the, Ukraine is not part of the EU, number one. No. Uh, number two, um, all my content is original, so n no worries. And number three, worst case comes to worst, I'll just get a VPN that'll send me from fucking Ecuador or wherever the fuck, you know? Some place where you don't have these crazy laws, man. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in three months' time, on two, or what, it's December, right? They're voting December 19th, I think, on this? I mean, we may never see Sargon or V again. They might just disappear. <laughs> the They're just like, like, just gone. Oh, like, like, like V and Sargon had been devoured by one of uh, V's fever dreams. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, nobody got my joke. Are, oh, are well. you trying to turn us pro Article 13? Is that what's happening here? But no, nah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. Uh, From everything I've read, it looks like they're gonna pat, they're gonna you know give it the final go ahead. So. What I'm also curious about is what are sites that use European hosting for their shed to get around, you know, problems in America? Like, does an ad host their content in some European country that's covered under the EU? If 13 goes through, won't they get fucked? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's in what is it? I want to say Slovakia. I'm not sure. I have to I have to double check on that. But yeah, I think it is an EU country. Yeah. So I mean, what the fuck's going to happen with that? And I don't even know where Josh hosts Kiwi Farms. Is Kiwi Farms going to get fucked by this? I don't know. I'll ask him. See if he's around. Uh, uh, I don't know if he's around or not. 
Uh, do you see him? I'm, I'm looking for him real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll message him. Sure. I mean, it sounds like a great business opportunity to set up an alternative fucking hosting service in like Africa now or fucking Asia somewhere that people can jump when Europe goes dark. China, China, they don't give a fuck about anything. You know, so long as you don't mention Tiananmen Square and a, and a few other keywords, they could care less. No, I, I think that, uh, yeah, because, you know, these big co companies, the easy thing, the easy solution is just to cut it, right? And so, yeah, that YouTube would cut out Europe altogether. It's fucking harsh, but... Um, I, I'm that's, what I, that, that, that's what I heard. I mean, I don't understand... And the reason I believe it is what is the alternative? They can't impose Article 11 and 13 standards on the rest of the world. So no. how are they ever going to cope with the amount of European content coming through? They'd have to analyze every fucking video, every frame of every live stream. And the no, instance no, that came through, they'd immediately have to act. And then you have to pay taxes on links and shit. I, I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. I think Josh is actually in in the Ukraine with you, Coach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should, yeah. Should but it's open like open. eight in the morning here, you know. And, yeah. And so he might not be awake yet, you know, or just. Not. Okay, he he's actually up. So if you want me. To oh yeah, him. send him a link. It'd be great to have him on. Shoot the shit. But I, that's a really good question. I I if look if I were a YouTube, I'd just say fuck Europe, and I just allow like designated content creators, uh, like like corporate uh, content creators, to have oh. stuff up and uh, fuck everybody else. It would be the easiest solution. I mean, don't you agree? Hey, it has to be something like that. I, I don't know how they're gonna manage it otherwise. Yeah, because you, you can't alienate your American base, right? And, and your American viewers and your American uploaders, because it, it's, it's not so much an issue of alienating your, your uploaders in the United States, it's the fact that your users would be sympathetic and very pissed off if you're not allowing um, people to upload wherever the fuck they want in the States, in North America, right? But Europe, frankly, the population of Europe is more docile. They, they like, uh, go along with whatever the EU says. And they'd be like, so, okay, sure. Josh, are, are you protected if Europe goes dark? You're not hosting over there in the EU or anything. Hey, Josh, right? how's it going? Oh, fuck no. Dobre okay. utra, uh, coach. <laughs> Dobre utra, yeah. Uh, no, never, ever, 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 for any reason whatsoever, put anything in Europe. Don't. Just don't. Ever. It is, uh, it is awful. Uh, the, the countries in Europe are retarded. The people in Europe are retarded. And the worst are the British. The Anglo menace needs to be eradicated peacefully. Uh, they are just, no, don't put anything in Europe. Okay, do you know if Ed, Ed's not hosted in the EU, is it, or is it? No. Okay, all right. Yeah, because I was, I was, that was the only thing that I was really bothered about, because I read both sites, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't really care if British YouTubers are fucked off the internet forever or whatever. <laughs> no, <laughs> Edie and Kiwi Farms are, are hosted in various locations. I actually host uh, one of the front ends for Encyclopedia Germanica right now, uh, just to kind of help out with that. Uh, but no, nothing, nothing's ever put in Europe. Uh, it just in principle, the, even Switzerland and Norway and Iceland, they don't have good laws. Iceland was the surprising one. Iceland has very strict defamation laws, so putting Kiwi firms there would be impossible. Well, how do you think this is going to play out? If uh, Do you think 13 and 11 are going to get passed? And if they do, what do you think uh, is going to happen with Europeans on the internet? Oh, is this what this is? Sorry, I haven't been watching. It, Ralph gave me a random invite. Oh, no, so. yeah. We, we, we were talking about uh, Article 13 and 11 because it looks like, I mean, it, it's went through the initial round. They're going to do another round of voting in December. If it passes that, um, you know, I've heard speculation. I, I'm fairly certain YouTube has commented on this where they're just going to kind of cut off uploads and live streams from Europe. Cause they, oh, yeah, they're going to have to. They're going to have to, like, okay, like you upload to YouTube. So everybody here uploads to YouTube or used to. And then in the case of one. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys know how like I I was shocked. I got on YouTube and I started uploading stuff like, oh, this is fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna play an intro and an outro song to my streams because I like I like music. I like set in tone with music. Like the fucking copyright system on YouTube is just uh, unimaginable. I'll get copyright strikes from UGM taking down my videos over three seconds of shit, and that's within the United States. So it's like. I mean, what's going to happen? I predicted this on a different stream. I don't even remember what stream I was ranting. I think it was Nick Rikita's, one of his videos. I was saying, what's going to happen with the internet? Especially as different countries are reacting to internet problems differently. China China's already done what I think is going to happen. But Russia is going to start doing it. 
uh, it's going to happen with Europe because of their IP laws, and it's going to happen with America, is you're going to have the Internet as we know it right now as a global infrastructure, a global network of independent uh, corporate providers working together and sometimes quarreling with each other to detriment. But in general, talking to each other, you're going to see that collapse and you're not going to have a big I, the internet anymore. You're going to have continental little I internet. And it, it, like if it happened, like it happened with China already, you already have the little I internet there. But you're going to see it with Europe and you're going to, because Europe's getting pissy with both the United States and Russia and other places you're going to start seeing it in the middle east as though like the only reason why the middle east is still on the big eye internet right now is that the the people there don't know a lot they don't know the technology but they're catching up they're getting there and when they get there you're going to have a arab union internet you're going to have the european union internet that switzerland norway iceland probably will join and then you're going to have the american internet which is just north america and, you know, there's going to be big companies that communicate with each other across these boundaries. And that'll be the remnants of the big eye Internet. But no, you're not going to have you're not going to have this shit by 2020 or not, not 2020, but 2030. By 2030, it'll all be gone. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree. I think there's going to be a push for real ID, too. I mean, I think yeah. that's going to be yeah. a big, big portion of it. Yeah. Already, already in China, if you connect, you have your uh, like there are anonymous, quote unquote, sites in China that are kind of like 4chan. But to register, you have to give them your, your identification well, number. Well, the thing, too, is like uh, when people talk about this, they bring up China and then people say, well, that's a communist country. All right. Well, look at South Korea because they do something very similar there where you're pretty much known. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even even with like MMORPGs, you can't play a, a Korean MMORPG on the Korean servers from outside of Korea unless you happen to have a government ID from Korea. So, no, it, it's it's. <laughs> It's not, it's not just a, a communist thing. It's not just an authoritarian thing. Because Europe isn't authoritarian, technically, but they're controlling their intellectual property rights. So even if it's not an authoritarian country, you still have these big dick companies that want to fuck people over. And they're going to fuck people over uh, in, in the same kind of fashion. Uh, not to not to be a, a fucking Debbie Downer, but, you know the, the memories of 4chan where the the FBI was hilarious, hilariously incompetent, and people were just posting child porn all over B for for years. That shit's gone. <laughs> they they have robots now that can like programmatically identify child pornography as it's uploaded and bunk it off, and you know that's great. But that technology is is applied to everything now. You upload a video. My I fucking uploaded a three hour stream, right? And as it was processing, I got claimant or uh, copyright ID shit for a bunch of. Uh, I played like 30 seconds of the movie uh, Precious. I played some UGM stuff, and that all got that got marked, right? And mm. the video hadn't even been fully processed yet. You couldn't watch the first hour; it was still being processed. So the copyright complaints were processing faster the actual encoding for the uh, the first hour of the the live stream. So this technology is is progressing very quickly, but only in the ways that benefit corporations. Well, yeah, I mean, they've even, you know, started factoring in, like if you put up a stream or if you do a stream or you put up a video and it's got copyrighted content in it, uh, even if you're the uploader, you used to be able to download it, they won't let you download copyrighted nope. material anymore. No. And way. even th like third party sites are starting to go along with that. Like if you go to certain converter yeah. sites or download sites, it'll say can't count down or it can't download this because Flip it's copyrighted. If you use yeah. JDownloader, you can easily get it. But as far as third party sites and YouTube itself, you can't. Yeah, it's this is uh, it's, as it's fuck. <laughs> And, well, that was uh, a nice, positive fucking uh, discussion. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, uh, if not, I'm, I'm sure all you guys already know about it, but an app uh, called J Downloader uh, will usually pretty much always uh, get you a copy of it, but you can't download. So even if it's just a couple little claims, uh, YouTube won't let you download it from the control panel. Uh, What's all it called? Normal... J, J Downloader. I think I've heard of that. Oh, yeah, is that all one word? J Downloader. Well, learn J -down how to use the command line. There's something called YouTube Dash DL. It's a Linux program, but it's ported to Windows. And YouTube Dash DL will pretty much be able to download anything. And you have to update it like every day because YouTube is constantly fucking with YouTube download. But it's it's. I mean, J Download probably just uses YouTube download. But a lot uh, of times, J Downloader it does update a lot. But it's well, it's can't, can't you just time. watch? The video is still in Flash. I mean, doesn't it just download the cache on your fucking desktop? You can save videos like that. 
Yeah, no, it, it does, but it, it'll throttle your connection if you download it through a different means. So it'll it'll limit your download speed to precisely what is required to watch it in real time, but you won't be able to buffer it. A couple now, minutes ahead. Ralph, I'm, I'm reading the J Downloader thing. I don't know if I trust the author. Uh, did you look at the guy that made this? Jay Caesar, who is that? No, I didn't see that. <laughs> That's Jay Caesar, pretty, Jay Downloader, yeah. That's, I don't, I don't a, pretty, know this, that's a pretty <laughs> regal title, though. There, though. I don't know yeah. who this guy is, yeah. <laughs> but no, it works good. Uh, somebody suggested that to me because I was having problems. Because, you know, I take the kill streams and back when I was on YouTube and download them and get the audio and put it up in podcast format. And, uh, you know, I was noticing that I couldn't download certain ones because it had copyrighted stuff in it. Uh, and then all of a sudden, Clip Converter, usually I would just use Clip Converter, but they changed it to where... If it's blocked on YouTube now, Clip Converter won't work with it either. So uh, YouTube threatened them. As yeah, well. yeah. Threaten all these little downloading companies. Yeah, they're like, yeah. we're gonna shut you down. Uh, but yeah, J Downloader works works uh, pretty good. For me. Now it might be slow sometimes. Sometimes the actual download speed is pretty slow, uh, but it'll get it done. You can also download like just the audio from from stuff too if you want to do that. So it's pretty handy. Yeah, I just I, I just use add-ons and shit to do. Uh, I don't even know what they are. Easy YouTube downloader, YouTube download helper, video YouTube download. Yeah. Like there are eight hundred fucking ones for Firefox and uh, Chrome and shit. No, I use Airy, and yeah, it has that thing of like some videos I can't download, but I'm I'm not very terribly sophisticated. The one I use is uh, I think it's SaveFrom.net or something like that, and it puts a little download button. Uh, beneath every YouTube video, but on the copyright ones, of course, it won't work. So, well, the thing that has me really concerned is the issue of uh, having like a government-issued uh, email or, or something like that. I think that that's oh, real ID is coming. Yeah, yeah, no, you better get ready for that. That's going to be fun. Yeah, I think that they're going to roll it out in the UK first. It would, it would make sense. <laughs> of course, they are. Why yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, mate, you need a license for that uh, internet connection? Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, Re Real ID is going to suck so fucking bad. Oh, God, is it going to fucking ruin the experience? You know, it could, it could have the opposite effect where people are just openly fucking belligerent now. It's like, what, you want me to say this with my Real ID? Okay, go fuck yourself. I'll say whatever the fuck I want now. I don't have an option. No, I don't have no, the, no, the option no, being no. white with my no, it'll, it'll make everybody like passive consumers of internet. And, and the, sure, there'll be a few people who are going to be the wild men of the, of the online world, but everybody's going to know who they are and eventually they'll get rolled up. They say one wrong thing, well, it, one 1488 joke, and they're fucked. Well, it's like the old joke about, like, you know, uh, people would always make jokes about 4chan saying, oh, well, if the government knows what your IP is and they can tie it to your post in this thread. Like, you get that real ID shit going where your IP and your name is attached to basically everything you're posting. And the, well, how are you going to browse a fucking anonymous board at that point? Yeah. It's a, I, I've given a lot of thought about the whole notion of anonymity online. And it seems to me that what it is is that, you, see, by being anonymous, you're able to explore things and, and test them out and see if you agree with them or not. I mean, how many times, you know, growing up, you were spouting some idea to your friends, some thought, some political idea, whatever. <laughs> you make this sound so artful. I just want to call people nigger, man. What do you... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I mean, I, it, it's just, it just seems horrible that, that that's the future. And I think it's going to create a lot more social pressure uh, like we're experiencing now. This kind of like pressure cooker environment of not being able to say any fucking thing. You know, in, in China, this whole thing of the social credit situation, right? That thing is going to fucking explode at some point because people are going to be so stressed out, this feeling that, that, that they are under no, pressure. No, I disagree. I disagree entirely because the, the Chinese see it as a game and they love to play. They like to, to crank up their score and, and no, that, that shit works extremely well in China. Really? Because, it, yeah, it's not just like, oh, Big Brother's watching you because you can you can do stuff that sets out a line. They won't disappear you in the middle of the night, but your, your score is going to take a hit. Right. And it's kind of it's kind of like falling behind. It's kind of like just being penalized, but in a way that isn't um, it's, it's not negative reinforcement. In fact, you get positive reinforcement by toe in the line, because if you if you retweet or reblog or whatever, something that the government put out, something like uh, the government puts out a big news article about the South uh, China Sea crisis and how they're they're doing stuff and how it's theirs and how people need to lay off and just let China control it. You retweet it and you say, yeah, this is right. Like your score gets a big a, a big thumbs up, and that creates the incentive to do it. It's not that you lose it; 
that that you know aggravates people. It's the the <laughs> reward sensation of yeah, towing it's, the it's line. Like basically, the government gives you hearts, gives you likes, and and you you go for more. You keep on hitting the button. Oh man, that's fucking. Well, I, I mean, the dopamine rush may work in Asia. I, I know Facebook's tinkering with an idea like that over here with their social credit score shit. Uh, but I'm more interested in if if China can make the idea work for them. Are they going to try to export it through their apps? I mean, we we're talking about TikTok. That's an app that's run by China. Is that going to get some kind of weird foreign version of social credit? Oh, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure that'll be the first ten steps. I don't know what. Like, I, I only know that that weird hit or miss thing that that's from TikTok. But you might see something where it's like if you post something anti-China and the machines detect that it's anti-China, uh, people won't see it and you won't get your likes and you won't get your retweets and you won't get your comments and shit on TikTok. But if you post something that's pro-China, something that flatters Xi Jinping, you might get, you know, ton, like more promotion, like automatically the machines will promote it and you'll get tons of stuff. And you might think, OK, you know, subconsciously in your in your squishy Play-Doh brain, you're thinking if I post something that is flattering to China, I get uh, way more, way more uh, exposure, and people love it and eat it up. So I should just keep doing that. And it won't be a direct thought; it won't be them telling you to do that, but it will. It'll stimulate you, and so it'll it, activate the omelets without so without you knowing. But so basically, you're t you're saying that we're going to become Pavlovian shills. <laughs> That's yes. basically it. Oh, well, li listen, I will kiss China's ass if they let me call people faggots on the internet. I don't give a well, shit. China's that's... fantastic. Let me call people faggots, China, and we're good to go. I had this thought a while ago. It's like, wouldn't it be funny if I ended up in the DPRK and I could convince Kim Jong-un to create like an internet exclave where I can host oh, whatever the fuck idea. I want. Good idea. And the old the only the only caveat is people in DPRK can't access my sites, but I can host whatever the fuck I want, and they're gonna keep it up. Like that, would, I would do it. I would live in DPRK and eat fucking fried rat if I could do that. That yeah. would be perfect. That would that that would be totally yeah. I, I yeah. Hang on a second. Let me just do quick super chats because they've been piling up, and, and people have been very kind, and I've been remiss on on this particular issue. So hang on. Uh, Isaac Jones. Oops, where did you go? Isaac Jones says, Coach, why is there an autistic Lego background? Because I'm autistic. Uh, Penty, uh, pacing while streaming, this is artistry. Jim, take note. Yes, Jim, take note. Uh, artless, suitless, life is suffering, I understand. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're just, you know, artless and suitless. That's the tragedy of it. N naked and, and uh, jejun. <laughs> Penty, if Trout drops below 50,000, he will kill someone. I think he's going to kill somebody if he drops below 100,000. Uh, Constantine's commentary, trunk, uh, excuse me, Kraut incoming with a truck of peace. That, I'd like to stream that, please. Uh, Leo the Burn Tickler. Leo the Bum Tickler, excuse me. I only know about Dresden from author Kurt Vonnegut's book, Slaughterhouse-Five, and Mother Night. I'm ashamed I don't know about history. Well, that's why we have the internet and Wikipedia. Go read up. Uh, Buddy Killer, doing good coach, uh, 148 gang gang. Jim, come check out Barry O and Danish Police on the best streaming platform. Also, Kitty's a massive bundle of sticks. Well said. Rando number nine. What is your take on Blair White detransitioning? Oh, that's an interesting. <laughs> Let's pause on the super chats and discuss that. Blair White is detransitioning. I thought that he and Sargon were going to be an item someday. I'm, I'm disappointed. So, what, what does that even entail? <laughs> Blair's like, going to stop taking hormones, apparently, and wants to freeze his sperm so he can have kids. Well, well, isn't Blair dating a dude? Can't that dude use his sperm? Yeah, well, what I was told, so that's what I asked, because I was like, isn't that a huge insult to the guy you're dating? Can he impregnate somebody? But apparently, this is what I was told in chat. I don't know. Uh, I guess they watch more of Blair's content than I do, which is almost zero, unless I'm looking to laugh at it. Uh, but apparently, uh, Blair wants to take his sperm and impregnate that guy's sister. Oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was told, yeah. So, I guess that's why they don't use this sperm. Uh, that actually made sense if that's the plan. Is it, wait, is this uh, like a long con? Like, <laughs> I, I, I want to. Is this like a long con to fuck some dude's sister? And this has been in the works for like five years. I don't know. That's that's what I was told. That's what I was told. And I mean, that actually lines up with it. So, oh my god, <laughs> this is some goofy shit. Oh man! This Apparently, Blair's listening. talked about this on 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 their channel or whatever. So I, I'm just trying to imagine what would happen if I went up to Jade and said, "Hey, listen, I want to have a baby. <laughs> Can I fuck your sister?" <laughs> like, you know, like, I, don't yeah, know. I, I think that she might transition you on the spot with a with a yeah, kitchen knife. You know machete. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> 
Jesus fucking Christ. That is just some weird ass shit. Uh, like, uh, my personal relationships are not complicated like that. I, I think, you know, Blair, he, she wins on that score. That's just, Jesus Christ. Anyway, let me get back to uh, Super Chats real quick. Um, an unnamed source. Danish police are on the case, Goy. I don't know what that reference is. We'll find out. There's a channel on Streamy called Danish Police, so they do pretty good stuff. So that's oh, got to check them out. We'll definitely check them out then. Aaron Shadows, just tuned in. What has been going on here? Ooh, lots of interesting things. We scared a pretty nice young woman away. That's what we did. Mecha Flare Zero, this is known as cyber balkanization, internet balkanization, the div dividing and conquering of the internet. The internet is too problematic, it seems. I would say so. Meringue Bad, you are Harlow's monkey and big tech is the clothed wired mother. I don't know that, what that reference is to. That's some big brain shit that you got thrown at you there. Yeah. Who, who is that? Don't ask me. I'm a dumb motherfucker. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I guess I'm in that club, too. I have no idea what m Harlow's monkey and big tech is the clothed wire mother. Oh, wait, which movie was that? that, that um, is this like? Oh, a, uh, um, you know, what? I know what it is. It was they gave a baby to a, a fake uh, like a baby monkey, oh, baby study, yeah. to a fake uh, like a uh, clothes wire replica of, of a mother with like milk in like where the breast would be like milk bottles. Yeah. And the baby became attached to the, uh, the fake mother. Wait, it's a monkey baby or a human baby? Monkey yeah, there's baby. Video. Oh, there a monkey <laughs> you can't baby. do this with people. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, shit. Oh man. Let's hope so. Damn. Damn. That's, that's kind of depressing. Cause it's severely depressing, quite frankly. Um, yeah, I think that I'm caught up with in Super Chats. So, uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about the end of the internet and, and that we're all going to be like slaves to shilling. We're going to be... Well, before that, I have a question. Did you guys... Uh, I, I think Ralph knew, but did you hear, Jim, about Wolf? Yeah, we, were, we talked about that. That's the uh, Cuban one, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. So is that confirmed? He was, That was the guy, right? The Yeah, that was the guy. Uh, I, I did a little stream about it. It's about 30 minutes it's on my channel. But in short, what happened is this fucking guy, like we had completely given up on Wolf. We just said Cuba doesn't have any animal rights laws. You know, even if we did find them, it, it, like they're not going to do anything. Well, this one guy, he detached himself from the spastics that were flinging around shitty fake docs and bad information. He uh, got into contact somehow with the guy's employer, which was a hospital, and he got fired from it. And through them, he got into contact with every animal rights organization in the country of Cuba. And they recognized him from the pictures uh, the guy had found and said, yeah, he's been adopting animals from us. And one of them had a policy of taking pictures. He only adopted from them once because of their policy. But they had a policy of taking a picture of the adoptee with the adopted animal. And one of the the picture that just so happened to be from that organization was uh, a little black puppy, which was in the, the leaks. Aww. So we had a picture of the guy we thought was him and the same person holding a puppy, which we independently saw from the leaks. And uh, from there, the animal rights organization started publishing the shit about him, saying that he needs to be locked up. The Cuban Constitution needs to be amended to protect animals. And they said that the police detained him. And the interesting thing about that is there is no law against animal cruelty in Cuba. So what the fuck they detained him on is a complete mystery. But somebody speculated on uh, the Cuban farms that because of the Fidel Castro era policies on sexual deviancy, what they're probably going to do is declare him criminally insane and keep him locked up and doped up on Thorazine. So oh yeah, common, basically common forever. Reason. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. That's uh, yeah, that's. So, are you telling me some fur fake YouTuber is going to get the Cuban uh, Constitution <laughs> amended because of his degeneracy? Because that's pretty fucking spectacular. Yes. The, no, that's what I said. It's like, isn't it funny if this this weird autistic Kiwi Farms Crusade gets the Cuban Constitution amended? Because they're they have this thing where they're renewing it. And they're they're looking what to do and change in it. And the groups are like, this is a clear call that we need to amend the constitution to protect animals. What if well. they hang him? Will you make that a banner <laughs> on your website? Oh yeah, I'll, I'll put it up there. Hey, I'll be uh, right back. I just don't think we'll ever know what happened to him. I think he's gone. I think <laughs> I don't think there will be any more news about him. If he, they put him in like a criminal detention center, or if they keep him doped up like a like a zombie in a mental ward in Cuba. I don't think we'll ever hear about it. Though the interesting thing is uh, the groups looked at the pictures and they said, it's clear that a second person is taking these pictures. They're not mounted on the table or anything. So now 
the hunt is on to figure out who his friend was, and they're looking for him too. Well, I know the uh, snake thing guy got let go. Do you think that? Um, cause no, I, I, he's I not let go. They're, he's out of prison right now because the DA is dropping those charges to arraign him on different, more uh, sweeping charges. Because they have all this information, and they only arrested him on certain animal abuse charges, but now they want to get him on child endangerment as well. So he's yeah, out for right was, now. That was the one that kept talking about his nephew, right? Yes. Yeah, fuck that guy. So... Yeah, that, that's interesting. I was going to say, do you think the Cuban officials, if they're going to go after this guy for whatever law they're going to throw at him, like they don't have the same hangups that a lot of European or, you know, North American countries would have. So they can kind of dig through everything, right? They don't really need to fuck around with courts. They could just look at everything. Do you think if they get a lot of damning information, they're going to send it to other countries? Oh, God, who knows? I mean, it, wouldn't it be wouldn't it be funny just saying if this thawed U.S. Cuban relations <laughs> like we we got to get these dog fuckers in America, Trump, come over here and look at this shit. We need to get them. Well, yeah, because I was talking about when we were talking about TikTok earlier, like that website fucking hates furries. Like I'm, I'm kind of amazed by the amount of younger teenagers that fucking hate furries. <laughs> Like it's surprising to me that it's just built up to a crescendo. They're they're all they're all conservative as fuck. They they they're so angry and they're so prejudiced and it's it's fantastic. Yeah, it's some funny shit that's going on on that website. But um, yeah, uh, oh. watching this uh, this unfold, I, I hope Kiro gets f f just fucked. I hope they find something that's just extra dirty on that asshole. Well, you know, speaking of because Kiro is really fucking popular on YouTube. Guess what popular YouTuber got in contact with me? Uh, Shane Dawson wasn't that the guy that interviewed him? Was that who? No, got I in my in my little stream I said, look, the entire fandom is guilty of this shit. The entire fandom, in some way, supports, condones, or overlooks uh, animal abuse in their community. And I pulled out that quote from YourMovieSucks.org and Adam Johnson saying that animals can consent with body language to sex. And uh, I read that, and he left a fucking comment on this video. A long Saying what? Uh, let me pull it up real quick. It's, I got uh, yeah, go Oh, you already have it? Okay. Yeah, um, uh, sure, go ahead. Okay. Getting, uh, by the way, he's using the little green text arrow here. Getting so triggered over an opinion you disagree with that you lump, getting so triggered over an opinion you disagree with that you lump them in with pedophiles and animal abusers. Uh, then he goes on with his own quote. That's some SJW level shit if I've ever seen it. I'm sorry you dislike my opinions on moral philosophy, but treating this as anything more than that is just nonsense. Uh, I don't see it as any different than my opinion on abortion, assisted suicide, or drug legalization. Each of the uh, This is animal fucking he's talking about, by the way. Uh, it, it, each of those topics have huge moral implications associated with them, but obviously no one's obsessing about any of those because this is all about trying to paint me as some sort of animal abuser. Sorry to break it to you, but I don't own a dog, and I have no interest in fucking real animals. Uh, the anthro animals I'm attracted to are lions anyway, so good luck trying to convince people I fuck those. Anyway, this is just retarded. I obviously condemn the actions of animal abusers featured in this video. It's disgusting. Attempting to lump me in with them because you're upset over my wrong think is disgusting too, though. And, then, and my response to that is, uh, and sh my response is longer than his, but I, I just said, it's like, you know, you can paint this however you want, but it was an indefensible statement. And the fact that you want to die on this hill is kind of weird. Cause from what I understand, his producer is, uh, like his assistant for a long time. Uh, Mark, uh, they broke up. I don't know if they were in a real relationship or if it was just like a partnership, but they split, uh, Adam confirmed it. And he was posting on 4chan saying that, uh, Adam cried when he refused to defend his bestiality position on Reddit and shit for him. So, like, I, I bring that up and I say, you know, this is obviously something that's not normal. It's not normal to people who even really like you. And I really like your content, but you should just take a fucking loss and say that this isn't acceptable. And the fact he keeps defending it, like, I, I'm not trying to falsely conflate him with an animal abuser. It's, an animal cannot consent to sex with a person, period. And even if they do, it fucks up the relationship between the animal and the person. You're supposed to be taking care of them. <laughs> what do you mean? Even if they do. <laughs> you know, I'm saying hypothetically, even if an animal could consent, what happens is it changes the relationship dynamics between the animals. And I looked this up. I was curious. If you fuck a dog, the dog tries to take care of you, and it can't because it's a stupid dog. 
So it gives them like trauma because they're in anxiety because they want to try to take care of you because now you're like okay, their bitch. I, I think you don't. And a it little fucks bit too them deep up. into this shit. I'm okay. just, no, I'm just saying <laughs> that's how that's the situation. Okay, <laughs> don't fuck your dogs. It'll give them well, yeah, anxiety. But the, but the, it's the, the corollary. Even if they could give consent from there on, I it just I think that you should have just axed that part of your argument. But okay, be that. I'm, as I'm, I'm leaving it in there because when I talk to these people, I want to give them something that they're going to care about. They're not going to care about decency but they will care that they're fucking up their dog and giving them trauma <laughs> just just the thought it's just my uh my oh, experience it works oh man I, that's pretty goddamn funny no I, I, the whole issue of well, fucking you, animals you know I what, I, actually i wanted to ask because i was gonna have you on my stream to talk about this but since you're here what's the fucking story with uh the people that run a lot of these furry sites oh, was it dragon ear you said you had a lot of fucking background information there, on him. I, I, I don't have it. Um, I haven't read up on it, but I just know from what people have told me that he is a continuous spastic. Like the reason why Fur Affinity is in such a dilapidated condition and has been hacked a bunch of times is that he's making tons of fucking money, but he's just stuck to degenerate shit and he's not taking care of his shit. Um, there was one guy, somebody corrected me. They said it wasn't Ink Bunny. It was Inked Fur, but it's a commission site. And the guy who runs that is a convicted sex offender against children. Uh, the guy Varka, and Varka is very important because he owns not only Bad Dragon, he owns E621, which is the largest furry pornography site in the world. And allegedly, uh, Varka's former business partners were convicted of, of animal abuse, sexual animal abuse. So all these fucking people are fucking animals. They're, they're either pedophiles or they're zoophiles or they're both at the same time. Uh, and the community from the, that's what I mentioned to Adam. I say, like, look. You're you're one of the most popular furries in the world, and all the leaders in the furry community seem to be uh, uh, implicit in animal sex abuse. So how can you say that it's not fair to paint all furries with that brush when the most visible people in the community seem to be actively engaged in it? And I, I've had multiple stories. Somebody even posted a comment on the uh, on the video, and I'll pull that up real quick. But he says that. Uh, He's encountered those petting zoos at, at conventions. So it's not it's not just a couple fucking people, uh, a couple stories. It is a continuous ongoing thing that's been happening for years. And uh, I used to go to Necronomicon, a con convention in Tampa, Florida. I even volunteered a couple of years. I accidentally found out about a petting zoo some of these fuckers had set up. I reported it to some people at the con and was told thanks and they would take care of it. Less than half an hour later, I was being escorted out of the hotel and banned from the convention. So I called the actual police, and by the time they got there, the room was cleaned out. So these conventions cover for this shit. And, uh, I mean, if even if you're just a regular person, a regular besides being a furry, and you go to these conventions and you just like the art, you genuinely just like safe-for-work animal art, by going to these conventions, paying the entrance fee, supporting these creators, you are indulging in this economy of animal sex abuse and i have no patience for it i don't care what you're into if you consider yourself a furry if you put money into it you are complicit and i think you should fuck off and stop stop moralizing and saying oh it's not all furries you're being you're being uh overzealous no i'm not it, it's all of them in some way or another you are a part of it well and i'm judging it from like what how we deal with them over here coach i'm kind of curious how do they deal with degenerates here in the Ukraine? He said, "Yeah, they shoot them." If, if, if there were a bunch, like if there, were, if this happened they in the Ukraine, with some guy killing puppies and fucking their skulls, what would they do to him? Um, I don't know, but I don't think you'd take kindly to it. I mean, you'd uh, probably get the necklace. Yeah, who knows? Uh, I can I can speak with more authority about Chile. In Chile, yeah, just chop chop their nuts off. You know, I mean, come on, it's it's just fucking wrong. And also, it, it goes against like a, a like a notion of masculinity in South America because doing that is just like you're fucking just. It, it's beyond merely degenerate. You're unmanly, which is kind of like worse. So yeah, they they'd um, they they. <laughs> I mean, in Chile, they what they probably do is toss them into some prison, into some general population prison, where the prisoners were just off the guy. Because there's, you know, it's like in every prison everywhere, you know, pedophiles and real sexual degenerates are just not tolerated. Yeah, that kind of situation, you know. But, but in the U.S., what would they get? You know, minimum security in like Tampa, Florida or something. Nice <laughs> Therapy <and> sessions, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, fucking, uh, what you call it, uh, the good liberal doctrine got you, you know, like, uh, yeah. Degenerates get to play tennis in Tampa, Florida for on the taxpayer's dime. Great. 
Yeah, that's... How come this isn't... Why aren't they all arrested? I don't get it. Why Why is it in the United States that they tolerate this, this kind of shit? When you expose that thing, Jim, I mean, you started talking about it. And, you know, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you, you sounded deeply troubled when you were discussing that shit. I'm assuming that it's kind of like... Uh, just you describing the imagery of like some puppy spazzing out as it died. I mean, that's just fucking horrifying, right? How come these people are just like picked up instantly and just tossed into some jail somewhere? I, I just don't well, get it. It, it, it was it, especially like snake thing was the one that uh, irked me the most because he was the one that would be like the guy'd be talking about like molesting kids or molesting or killing animals, and then snake thing would be like, aww. And yeah. then like hugs and like that kind of shit. And I was like, would somebody just fucking bring him and put him against the wall? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, everything. It didn't matter. Like Snake Thing was the person. He was blackmailed by other furries into releasing the information that he did. But the weird thing in seeing him interacting with all the other Zeus Hades was that it did not matter how awful it got. Snake Thing was enamored with the cruelty. The, it didn't. There was no upper limit. You could show him anything. And he would send hearts and little cute cat faces and shit. He loved <laughs> he was it. A fucking psychopath, like a legit fucking psychopath. Yeah. You think it was for real or a put on job? Oh, oh no, yeah. I think it's for real. I think that dude is legitimately fucking damaged. And, in his and head. what's what's scary is that it's like, would it have been as bad if these people didn't know each other? It seemed like they met each. And Wolf, people said, "Is Wolf really a furry?" Yeah, he was showing off fur suits and saying people he knew in the community, and it's like. Uh, they they met each other through the furry fandom. They met each other and they found each other on Telegram. They made groups and they started building each other up because the puppy thing happened over the course of him talking to Snake Thing. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some puppy stuff next. And Snake Thing is like, Oh, I can't wait for that. Oh, that's and it's like they're they're building each other up. The psychopaths met each other through the furry fandom, and that's why the pup like the puppy wasn't just killed. It wasn't just raped. The 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 corpse of the puppy is completely blown out it's like it got hit with an ied and it was just blunt force trauma and it was entirely because these people fucking knew each other do you think i'm I mean, curious is it, oh i was gonna say is anybody taking the time like if they were that interconnected like, what i find hard to believe is that these people like snake thing and wolf and uh carol and all the people that were in this uh telegram group right if they're so into that if they're so into kitty porn and animal torture and all this fucked up shit I find it hard to believe that those are the, that's the only group they would have talked about it in. Like, I'd imagine that their groups they affiliated with and the people they hung out with on other websites were probably aware or into it as well. Like, has anybody made, like, a little diagram, like a, a fucking... <laughs> uh, Sylvia uh, yeah, yeah, just connecting. <laughs> like, connect the dots. He know, yeah, he knows him here and here and here and here. So and they're hanging out we on we should get the chick who did the uh, alternative influencer network to do a piece <laughs> on that. That would have been, like, more worthwhile. Don't you think? Do you think it'll all connect to Andy Worski? Will he be the big black <laughs> Or maybe it'll connect to V. V is at the dead center of the whole thing. That would be funny. No, I, I think it's kind of horrifying. And Look, it, here's something interesting about it. The, see, these people would never have met had it not been for the internet, right? And I bet a lot of them would have gone to their graves thinking that it's just some bizarre fetish that they had or bizarre desires that they have and never actually acted on it unless they had found others who shared a similar proclivity. You see what I'm saying? So Yeah, it's the group supports the delusion. Yeah, I mean, if you were just like, if this is the 70s or 80s and you were some guy that yeah. was into raping deer, um, <laughs> yeah. you were kind of like on your own. The town, the community would think you were fucking weird so you'd yeah. never talk about it or engage in it. Yeah. But you go online and you meet random isolated people that are into that too and now suddenly it doesn't seem like one person, it's a whole group of them. And yeah. it's all inclusive and everybody's supporting each other. And you go, girlfriend, and dog, go rape that puppy. That yeah. kind of shit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And you got to keep in mind, a community can be can number in the thousands. And yet, in the wider scheme, they're a drop in the bucket. I mean, it's microscopic in comparison to the millions, well, billions of people who are online and who have perfectly legitimate hobbies. I don't know, cars or woodworking or whatever the fuck, right? Uh, so all of a sudden you have thousands of these crazy fucks all gathered together. What do you do about them? Because it goes back to the issue we were talking about of the balkanization of the internet and, and how everybody's... Uh, you make them afraid is, is what you do. What happened was the furries, they got eclipsed by the bronies, they got eclipsed by the trannies and all this other crazy shit that's happened since the, uh, the late 2000s. 
so they felt comfortable and they they were safe for some time until this happened and now i guarantee you if there was any animal abuse going on in the furry community it's it's on ice right now for just a while uh i'm sure they've they've stopped doing petting zoos and stuff and conventions because they know some fucking psychotic is going to go in there with a camera and record it and they're going to get busted for it this really so, needs to happen i want to see somebody fund a project or do a project about fur fag undercover where they're going to conventions They've got a camera in the eye of their fucking mascot outfit, and they're just filming the shit. Because well, I'd imagine in those hotel rooms and those you know passing yeah. conversations, yeah. you know, after you walk over the corpse that tumbles the stair drag, and you're going to hear about people fucking animals and yeah. getting together and trading CP or doing some other weird shit with each other. Well, let's just say that if somebody were to have a plan like this, they wouldn't be able to talk about it because they they put people on edge. Oh no, I would openly talk about it. I want them. To <laughs> No, yeah, like some uh, project Veritas point. for the furries. That would be an interesting project, to tell you the truth. See, yeah, that's the thing with, like, the, the deviancy and, like, all oh, the underhanded shit. Like, there are laws against it, too, but that doesn't put them on edge. So I, I'd imagine they're nervous for a week or two, and then they get horny, and then they're like, let's go <laughs> steal a giraffe and <laughs> fuck it to death in the forest. So, you know, I just, I want to I wanna see that. I think if you could present video evidence of these people talking about it, planning it, and even starting to participate in it, that might be a death nail for the fucking furry community. In that a might free be society, well, there's the, always going to be people doing that. You notice you don't hear much about the furry problem in China or Saudi Arabia. They or shoot them like that. or <laughs> chop their heads off or see if they can yeah. fly off a rooftop. Yeah. yeah. What was that? What was that local police? There was like a, uh, they were having issues with Muslims uh, in some province in China or whatever. The, and, the uh, Uyghurs, yeah, the Uyghurs. put them on a the camp. Yes. Well, no, no. They, they interviewed, they interviewed like some local cop and asked them like, what are you guys, what are you going to do about it? Right? Like if they, if they start you know start shit and he's like the boots of the communist party will stamp down on their fucking necks like he was all we're gonna fucking massacre these yeah. people if they don't sit down yeah they don't fuck around yeah you, you know what they do in the concentration camps for the Uyghurs? they uh force them to drink alcohol and eat pork not kidding that that's, that's and they, they they force them to learn uh mandarin the way that the camps are described the, they, i read like a new york times piece on i think they're called the uyghurs not the uyghurs but Wait, sorry my, my they had a um had an <laughs> cult of sink <laughs> 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 but they were talking to him and i think ethnically the uyghurs are uh kazakh there's yeah. something like that where they're more closely related to the, the Kazakhstan people than, than the Chinese. So what they do is they round them up. They teach them Mandarin. They teach them uh, to eat pork. They teach them uh, to love the party, to love Xi Jinping. Uh, they teach them about Mao. And then they get out. And all I'm thinking is, you know, the, they're, they're describing this like they're in the concentration camps waiting for the Holocaust to come around. But it's like, it doesn't sound that bad. Like, I, <laughs> I realize that this is completely anti-ethical to, like, American people. But as far as, as horror stories and death camps go, it's like, just fucking eat your pork and stop talking <laughs> about Muhammad. You'll be fine. Uh, like, I, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have any empathy for your fucking shitty San Negro religion. I, I'm sorry. I, I just don't care. No, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to look for the article because uh, I want that guy's quote because it was funny as shit. Like, he was full, we're going to fucking hurt people. If they don't <laughs> the fuck uh, while you're looking for it, uh, quick super chats. Uh, Jay Taylor, Josh stared too long into the abyss. Um, no, I'm uh, gone. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, thum, thum, thum. Uh, Cyber Skull, gas the furs. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, I, look, I used to think that furries were just funny, but but now with this shit coming out, Jesus. I mean, I, I thought it was kind of weird. Um, I once saw, like, on Jackass, that uh, some episode that uh, Brad Pitt was on, and they were all dressed in his panda suits, right? And just like, the frolicking in public and I thought it was funny as hell and I thought that was my picture of furries they're just like goofy fucks who like to dress up and and you know fuck each other in their stupid costumes that's what I thought but this shit Jesus Christ I, I just don't don't understand it I it, it's just beyond my my bourgeois imagination just oh I, I love this I'm reading uh, when I went looking for this quote from Business Insider because this gives some perspective into how cocked Europe is <laughs> um, they're talking about the shit China's doing to the Muslim population over there. Yeah, and it's it's talking about why are they, it keeps saying you know Muslim countries have been silent over China's crackdown on its uh, Uyghurs, a Muslim majority ethnic minority in the country's west. And the experts say that the reason that all these Muslim countries won't say anything is because they're afraid China will fuck with them either <laughs> economically or militarily. <laughs> yeah. 
And yet Europe bends over backwards for all these North Africans and Middle Easterns that are flooding them to be, you know, culturally sensitive. China doesn't give a fuck. The same can be said about uh, Russia. I mean, all this shit's happening in Ukraine. Is Europe going to do anything about it? Fuck no, they're not, because Putin sends them the gas they need. Uh, I mean, you're not going to see any any military action from from Europe protecting Ukraine because uh, yeah. Ukraine doesn't have the fucking natural gas. Yeah. So no, Europe is is totally and utterly beholden to the superpowers right now. They need they need America's help, they need Russia's help, and they need China's help to even exist. It's it's pathetic. They're in well, nobody in America is going to support going to war for Ukraine either. So honestly, if Russia just took over the whole place, nobody. I mean, nothing's going to happen. I mean, they might get some sanctions or whatever, ostracized, but yeah, as far as military up, action. Yeah. That's not going to happen. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is, I doubt if the Russians would take over Ukraine because think of the hassle nah. of having... No, it, it, it would be they don't want yeah. Like, Russian, if you tried to have people in Ukraine trying to govern over them after one giant invasion, like, it would just be fucking necessary. People would be getting gunned down the streets. It wouldn't be pretty. Uh, the reason why they could take over Crimea is because a, a reasonable it's portion of the community mostly. was complacent with it. Yeah. 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 No, no. The the idea of them invading Ukraine, it's it's pointless for them to keep on like just like like so sort of like bumping the edge of the desk all the time and keeping Ukraine unstable like they're doing in in Donetsk region and that kind of thing. That's what they're going to continue to do. And so Ukraine is always going to be you know at sixes and sevens, and never really get their shit together insofar as the economy and so forth. But you know it's never going to devolve into outright chaos. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm not particularly concerned to tell you the truth. I, I think it's yeah. just the way it's going to be. You know, there's no upside to invading Ukraine, and there's shitloads of downside. And think of the number of people you'd need, administration, all the rest of it, to take over the fucking place. You know, it would just it would just be a fucking nightmare. Yeah, Josh, you ready to bug out if they get if we get invaded? <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking about it. I like this place. It's comfy. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. Uh, but I, I've already made arrangements, if need be, to get out within six hours. I can get out, you know, and me and my family. Fuck yeah. I'd be crazy not to have, like, prepared for it. Which is kind of um, cool. You know, you're living in a place where things could go tits up like that, you know? And that's pretty what's cool. The, uh, what's the cost of living over there? Like, if you, can, if you can put it into... If you put it into American dollars, what would the average price of like rent a gallon of gas or a gallon of milk be? I live well, downtown. I live in a very nice area. It's uh, downtown. I have everything I need. My my rent and utilities are about five hundred. So it's it's comparable to living in like a, a like a, a more you know removed place in a city, like an apartment. But my place is great. I eat like for four dollars a day. That's everything I need. If I, and then I go out, like if I wanted to cook and stuff, it would be pennies on the dollar. Yeah. But I can go out and I can get borscht and stuff every day and it doesn't cost anything. Um, to put this into perspective, I pay twice as much on the Kiwi farms and the infrastructure for the site than I do on anything that I buy. Yeah, I can, I can say like, um, I mean, I've, I've looked at my numbers over the last, um, I don't know, been here about a year now. Um, I can say that uh, for, how can I put it? For a thousand a month, you can live very well by yourself. A extremely thousand, extremely well. Yeah, extremely well. And how are, how are you? Are you living there? Are you expats or like is this like? Yeah, a, that's what I was gonna a, ask. How did, what did you have to do to like get into you? Let, let me tell you my in, immigration process. I arrived without any prior notification. The border <laughs> agent had his phone pressed to his head. He looked at my passport, saw it was American, looked up to check the picture, stamp it through. I did not say a single word to him. Yeah, and I've been <laughs> ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it cost me, uh, you get 90 days on your passport, right? On any U.S. passport, any passport, pretty much, okay? 90 days uh, in any 180-day period. Now, you arrive and you can get a lawyer. The U.S. Embassy has like a list of uh, accredited law firms that they deal with. And you get a lawyer and it's going to cost you a thousand bucks to set up residency. And I mean, the lawyer fee plus about 150 bucks per person insofar as the actual fees, governmental fees that you have to pay to set up residency. Once you're a resident, you can set up bank account, the whole shebang. You know, and it's, it's, it's not too easy, bad, easy. honestly. It, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, I think that it is, um, I mean, I'm here because my wife is Ukrainian, right? And she wanted to live with her mother and she wanted the kids to learn Russian. And so, okay, fine. Uh, and I didn't mind it. You know, I thought it would be kind of interesting to live in, in, uh, in Ukraine for a year or two, right? Which is basically the plan at this point. And I mean, after this, you know, I would personally want to live in Tokyo. That's that's where I want to live for at least a couple of years because that would be cool. But anyway, um, I think that Ukraine for an expat, uh, especially somebody who's living online, 
I think that this is the ideal place to tell you the truth. Yeah, if you make your money online, you can go anywhere, but this is probably one of the best yeah. places you could live. Yeah. The, the only hump you have is uh, the language, you know, because relatively f outside of Kiev, relatively few people speak English. Uh, and I'm lousy with languages, okay? But, you know, if somebody is moderately good with languages, you can pick it up pretty quickly. And uh, it's, it's an easy life. It's, it's very, it's fun. People are nice. You can walk around. At no, one night. of the, one of the reasons I like, I, I plan to travel to Asia and stuff and do stuff over there. But one of the concerns is, and you hear this from a lot of people that even go over there to do a profession, right, where they're working a job, um, is protection of the legal system and access to like uh, medical aid, police services, fire services. Like when you set up residency, you're not becoming a citizen, right? You're, you're just, right. you're a foreigner residing there. So yeah. what, what are your rights compared to like what happens? You can't vote. You can't vote. You can't, you can't vote. Uh, you should be aware that especially in China, uh, there is no social medicine. Like there is no must treat laws with the hospitals. If you get fucked up, you have to make sure yeah. that you have money. Yeah, but so medical expenses are cheap here. I mean, really, really cheap. And I'm talking top of the line care, okay? Uh, but what made me laugh is I was walking down the street once, and if I hear it, like this is my prejudice. If I hear English, I'm thinking those them motherfuckers up to something. They're, they're up to no good. But I was walking on the street, and the people in front of me were just casually talking English. And the guy reveals to his partner that he's a, a fucking neurosurgeon living here, and he says that it's just it's easier to practice overseas because uh, the American medical system and shit is just a wreck, and he he does better as a doctor in Eastern Europe and did in the United States. No. no look, I had a recent, I had, um, I had like a med medical procedure, no big deal. And I got uh, top of the line care and it cost me, the whole thing cost me under 50 bucks. This was private, okay? And it was a hard thing that they had to like put some thing into, it was a, um, what you call it? Coronary. A stent? Thing. Yeah, no, they didn't put a stent in, but they had to, to do the, the, the needle thing where they check to see if your coronaries are okay and shit like that. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the whole thing cost me 50 bucks. Or no, a little bit more, about 70. Okay. And it was like a real procedure. And the doctor, he's <laughs> Is he with... using like a bicycle hose pump? Like, <laughs> is this real medical gear they're using or what? <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it, was, it was perfectly fine. Perfectly acceptable. You know, no, no, um, you weren't concerned about it. You were like, okay, I'm, I'm at a perfectly good uh, hospital and getting checked out and no problem. You know, and the doctor was clearly a doctor, not like the. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he looked and sounded like a doctor because he was and he spoke to me in English and he was like perfectly, um, you know, perfectly fine. Well, uh, people talk about how it's easier. It's cheaper to get a hip replacement. And like you can go to Spain and get a hip replacement twice and the travel expenses included and the, the hotel fees included for your recovery. Mm -hmm. uh, is less than it would cost in the United States. And, and it's true. Yeah. And the main reason for that is in the United States, uh, the hospitals can write off any money they don't collect. If you if you bankrupt somebody, you can write that off on your taxes. Yeah. But more important, for everybody on Medicare and Medicaid, uh, they, can they have to charge everybody the same price. So because the government will 100% pay for any person on Medicare and Medicaid, uh, they will charge exorbitant fees for everything like fifty dollars for an aspirin a hundred dollars for a plastic tube they charge you out the ass for every goddamn thing that they they do medically and they have to charge everybody the same exact rate but the the even though they bankrupt all these people with the medical expenses what they get out of it is for everybody on medicare and medicaid they get it, the money a hundred percent from the government so it, it benefits them to bankrupt people and not collect the money from the majority of middle class americans so that they can collect uh guaranteed results from the government for the elderly and the poor and outside where you don't have that system which is everywhere outside of the united states uh it's it's cheaper to get health services and in socialized countries they dictate what the prices are for everything yeah so they don't have that either so you can only uh, okay this is the other thing i'm curious about so you can only rent though right i mean that's the other no, issue with they'll let buy. you they'll let you own property if even you're though resident. you're not a citizen if you're if you're a resident yeah you can you can own property any place in the world if you're not a citizen of that country it, yeah, no, not, not like in the Philippines, you can't own property unless you're a, uh, a citizen. And the interesting caveat with that is the Philippines is one of the only countries in the world besides the Vatican City that doesn't recognize divorce. So what happens is expats go to the Philippines, they marry, the woman can never divorce them, and then you just put everything in her name. But I mean, there are some countries where you can't buy property as a foreigner, but uh, Ukraine is not one. Yeah, y y there's there's no problem at all. And, um, and 
it, it's worth your while to own property and rent it out here. I mean, so far as investing is concerned, because you're getting basically about, oh, between eight and 12% return on investment in so far as rental property, because there's no mortgage market here. Okay, uh, there are a few mortgage loans uh, put out, and therefore, the price of uh, of properties of assets is much lower because of it. Because you got to keep in mind, the United States and in Western Europe, the prices of of housing are exorbitant because of the availability of mortgage loans. And so, you know, more loans means that the prices just go up and up and up because you're just paying the the in, the, um, the 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 uh, you're making the mortgage payment at a fairly low interest rate. But in Ukraine, since there are very few mortgage loans out there, most people just pay for the whole thing. And to get a mortgage loan, you've got to jump through a whole bunch of hoops. You know, the, the prices are just much more reasonable, and therefore the rental income is just, you know, between 8 and 12%. It's just a great deal, you know. And to tell you the truth, honestly, you know, you've got to live by the, by the, um, by the motto of uh, Rothschild, you know, buy when there's blood on the street. You know, it, it's it, since Ukraine is unstable because of the Russia situation, asset prices are always going to be low, or they're going to be low for the for the foreseeable future. And well, so, yeah, I mean, if I if I want to buy when there's blood on the streets, I'll just wait for the housing bubble in Canada to burst. Fuck. No, no, because they'll prop that up. That's the thing. And, and there's no. Way. Have you seen the prices of a shitty fucking two room yeah. house? In some places it's like two, three million dollars. There's no yes. way they're gonna prop that up. They're gonna prop no, it up. They yeah. they did it before. They'll do it again. They'll prop it up somehow. Canada and Australia have, uh, and New Zealand have amazing housing prices right now because yeah. the Chinese. The, there are there are millions of millionaires in China. The, the, they have so many fucking people. They have like as many millionaires in China as the United States has people. And the wealth inequality. Well, that, and I'm not so middle, sure. Well, not not exact, like not the same exact. But they have millions of millionaires, and the wealth is kind of spread even between them, uh, more so than the United States even. And uh, what they do is, when they have money, they don't want to keep it in China because the government can take the money whenever they want. So they buy property in Canada, they buy property property in Australia, to the point where, like, the official Chinese government owns almost one percent of Australia's land mass. So the reason why the price is there, it's fucking over the, the locals. If you're a local Canadian, you can't buy shit. There are empty houses all over the place in Australia and Canada that nobody lives in that's owned by the Chinese that people can't buy, and it, it's causing a housing crisis. No. I, 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 I disagree with both of you. There's no way they're going to keep that propped up long term. I, I don't care how much money China pours into that. $3 million fucking suburban two-room house is ridiculous. <laughs> that's never going to last. Yeah. Uh, well, It'll pop. Effect, uh, irrespective but the, the thing is you're asking about ukraine i think that ukraine is the future i don't understand why more um uh, guys who work online don't move out here because it's ideal okay i mean if you're if you're online if your life is online uh or you're retired you know it, what the fuck are you doing in in the u.s and western europe you know you can you can fly out there it, it costs what i was i was pricing it the other day because i gotta go to new york uh in january and you know it, it's it's you know, uh, like uh, I think it was eleven hundred for the flight and the and the week long stay in the U.S. Right? So why wouldn't you do that? Live in Eastern Europe and go to the estates, you know, once or twice or three times a year or whenever you need to, right? And and the 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 price of going and staying in the states is going to be just uh, you know so much less than what you're saving here. I mean, it it just seems obvious, but th that's just me, you know. Uh, if you're online, fuck the states. Quite frankly, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's it's just not. Um, it's a shitty life, especially the issue of healthcare. Because he, see, here in Ukraine, you know, um, the healthcare, the private healthcare, is good. It's very good. Well, it's private healthcare has always been good everywhere, and there are always going to be assholes who have enough money to buy the private healthcare. But since you don't have so many of the disincentives that Josh was Josh was talking about, Medicare and all the rest of it. You know, the price of private health care here in Ukraine is reasonable. The same went for, for living in Chile, for instance. In, in, in Chile, the, the, the private health care was, yeah, sure, it was, it was more expensive than the, than the state health care, but it was reasonable, you know? I mean, we had our kids in Chile, right? The whole thing in the best clinic in Chile cost me 10 grand. I mean, the whole thing, and it was, uh, they were both by cesarean, right? The whole operating room, the whole uh, the anesthesiologist, the 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 doctor, the the whole thing, ten grand, almost exactly for both pregnancies. No insurance, just cash, right? 
And in the States, that same pregnancy would have been between thirty and fifty thousand dollars each. You know, I, it, it, you know, healthcare in the States is ridiculous, and I don't understand why more Americans aren't looking into other countries to do a lot of their healthcare needs, like dental shit, like hip replacement or whatever the hell. I mean, expensive uh, procedures that are, that can be elective, that can be done whenever you feel like it. I don't quite understand why people don't do it, but you know, they're grown-ups. And somebody asked, can you have guns in Ukraine? You can have rifles if you're a citizen. You have to get a special permit from the president to carry a pistol, um, but you can, you can buy those. <laughs> Yeah, uh, th that's the one problem I don't particularly care for about Ukraine is that uh, corruption is fairly prevalent, but they're trying to crack down on it. I personally prefer uh, countries where there isn't corruption because then you never really know where, where the line is. It's just, I personally prefer things to be a little bit more clear cut. Um, I, I myself have never participated in any kind of bribery or anything like that, and just not interested in that. Um, but um, that, that's the one little issue about living in Ukraine, that sometimes you do need to bribe people to make things So, can, Coach, can you rename this stream uh, Josh's Remembrance Stream? <laughs> Why? I, I don't know if after admitting you're an illegal alien who bribed for gun permits, I don't know how well things are going to go for you next week. <laughs> and I just said, I'm in. Hmm? What's that? What? I didn't say that I was an illegal alien. I said that well, I, just, no, I, I asked how you got in, and Coach was like, well, you have to go through these steps, and you're like, I just showed up at the border. <laughs> no, no. And, then I, and then I asked for a gun permit. Here's 20 bucks, officer. <laughs> I'm just revealing my repository of information, and if I get drafted into the fucking Ukrainian nationalist movement, remember me as a flailing spastic who accomplished nothing, <laughs> if, if, unless I unless I earn freedom for, for my country, my new country. I mean, that's how it works in a lot of these countries, though. You have to, it's just, it's patronage. You just graze a few palms, and that's how you get, that's how you get things done. I mean, it's how it works here, too, a lot of times, yeah. but yeah. Uh, it's pretty much out in the open. Uh, in, in, well, uh, in the now, States, how, it's different. How, how is work over there? I mean, this is the thing, right? I'd imagine, I mean, this sounds really attractive. If I was, if I was younger and I'm making YouTube money and I'm on my own, I'd travel and do shit over there, but like, the YouTube money shit, the internet money stuff, I mean, you got a couple years of that, and that, that's good, but. Say you set up residence in some, you know, Eastern European country or some Asian country, and now it's two years later, you're not making YouTube money. What the fuck are you going to do for work to support yourself when you're just some fucking resident? I lived in Australia. I lived in the Philippines all doing work for uh, for foreign companies online. I'm, on, I'm going to be set no matter what. If uh, Plan Omega comes in and I have to shut down my site and move to China or something, I can still do development work and make money, good money for, for the local economy. How about you, Coach? What, what's your take on that? Well, my, my situation is a little bit different. So I, I don't quite, you know, I mean, if the YouTube money, I'm, I'm not, I don't depend on the YouTube money. Hey, it's great, you know. And, uh, you know, oh, I forgot. I forgot you and Quartering got into a pissing match about bank accounts. <laughs> yeah, you're probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but Ralph uh, and I, on the other hand, would be fucked in Eastern, <laughs> in Eastern well, yeah, you, no, you guys no, would be no. fucked. I'm going to do tasteful uh, Roman documentaries if I ever uh, collapse. <laughs> on, on no, you know, I, hey, um, Ethan, you mind if I discuss what I that suggestion I made? No, I don't mind. You can go ahead. Uh -huh. 